Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Expect a night of murder, poltergeist and imprisonment on Tyneside. <laughs> to Most Haunted. This week, I've brought you back in time in the center of Newcastle. This fortress may hold a millennium of memories, but we're here to solve the paranormal phenomena said to still beset this castle. And are we helped by standing on land that houses both Roman ruins and thousands of human remains? With such history, it's no wonder there's so much alleged paranormal activity. And that's why I had to bring you to the Castle Keep in Newcastle upon Tyne. Castle Keep's original Mott and Bailey construction was replaced by the 12th century version that still stands tall against the skyline of Newcastle's modern day city centre. However, several worrying connotations also exist here. A Roman settlement and an 8th century cemetery were both disturbed to allow the castle's foundations to be laid. Hundreds of corpses were exhumed, but how many hold a grudge? And in a city that once fell under Scottish rule, will we find any spiritual connection to this battle-scarred land, or indeed Braveheart himself, part of whose bloody remains were later displayed at Castle Keep? Since then, shops, houses, and even a jail and hospital have all stood within the walls of this ancient fortress. The Castle Keep that you can see behind me goes back to the time of King Henry II. And the amazing thing is that Long before a castle was put here, there was a Roman settlement and apparently part of the Roman walls and fort are still underneath the castle. Imagine the terror of being in this room completely on your own and then without any warning, loud deafening bangs echo all around you. Well, that's exactly what's been witnessed here in the Great Hall. Strange mists have also been seen along with dark shadowy figures that haunt in the dead of night. This was also the county jail. It's one big room, the garrison room down below. And the number of tormented souls that would have been imprisoned in there have been sentenced to be executed, whipped, branded, or sentenced to the pillory here in this place. Recently, a visitor to the castle was walking down these stairs towards the mezzanine chamber. They bumped into somebody, and when they went to apologize, there was no one there. Dark, shadowy figures have been seen lurking here, and a white light, said to have a will of its own, has been seen floating through this chamber on many different occasions. Um, we have had a lot of people say they've seen figures and shadows actually moving around the gallery when there's been nobody up there. Um, so there's been quite a lot of different sources of come up with things which maybe can't be explained by normal physical means. The only um, ghost that I can and find out about is, is known as the Poppy Girl, and she is reputedly a girl that was imprisoned in the county jail uh, for selling flowers, and apparently she was murdered in the prison. Her ghost is supposed to have been seen here. The keep is actually built on top of a cemetery, so when the foundations for this building were dug, um, there would be a lot of burials most probably hundreds of burials which will be disturbed to actually lay the foundations for the whole of the castle keep. So who or what is causing the strange paranormal happenings that surround this place? Could it be the many people that were murdered here or the witches that awaited their trial? Have they all come back to haunt? We have 24 hours to find out. This is clearly one of the oldest properties that Most Haunted has ever visited. But aside from the obvious mind games that castles usually portray, lies an investigation that greatly intrigues parapsychologist Louis Saver. So Louis, what are you looking forward to most about being here in Newcastle? Well, we've got a fantastic location. I mean, there's 2,000 years of human occupation on this site. 
Um, and really interestingly, we've had lots of um, first-hand reports, uh, photographs uh, and apparitions uh, reported in this location. So uh, it's a really active location uh, and hopefully we'll get some really good stuff. So what do you think we've got to look out for tonight? Well, one of the dangerous things about this location is we're surrounded by a modern Newcastle. It's very noisy, as you can hear. Um, so any of the noises that we might encounter on the uh, vigils may well be modern. So one of the jobs that I have here as a parapsychologist is to go around the location, perhaps be aware of any of the noises which do have normal explanations, and to make uh, the rest of the team uh, aware of those possible influences. So I think one of the things that I'm going to be doing is talking to people about their experiences and just making sure that what they're experiencing isn't uh, brain-based, it isn't their own preconceptions, ideas about what's going on, that it's actually objective paranormal phenomena. So you're basically here to make sure that we all don't get carried away with, with the whole sort of uh, old-fashioned storytelling of a, ca of a castle? Absolutely, as much as I can do. Okay. With a history of bloody violence and incarceration ingrained into every brick, we were ready for mediums David Wells and Gordon Smith to delve deep inside this building's fabric and unearth just what makes this location so intriguing and unnerving. Our team were ready to serve their time in the haunted confines of Newcastle's Castle Keep. There was one astral that stands out in this space, and it's a young woman um, moving very quickly around the galleries and possibly around the whole place, it seems. So I'm kind of later, hopefully, make a stronger connection with her. It's, again, one of these places where I think you can best describe as a, a real mix. You know when you're in a theatre yes. oh, and you like get that, that buzz, that, but you know people are talking, but you don't... It's just like that in my right. ears. Do you need to sort of walk around the castle further to sort of make a clearer communication with her and find out more about her, or can you pick up it more now, or...? We'll meet her. We'll meet her on the way around. OK. Do you want to move on? Yeah. OK. Upstairs. Back so that way, one. yeah. Having held so many men captive, David's sensing of a young woman within this castle was as welcome as it was unexpected. So we decide to follow his and her lead and move up to the galleries that overlook the Great Hall. The only thing um, I am aware of in these upper galleries is a woman. Is this the same woman that no, you... No, it's not, oh. which is in, she's older. And she seems to be an Elizabethan. Right. But she almost seems like a like a party goer. Right. And she's about age wise herself. I think twenties, but like twenty four, twenty five. And the woman downstairs? More teenager, more right. sixteen, seventeen, right. maybe even less than so that. So quite young women mm. here then. Mm. And is she Elizabethan too, don't you? The younger girl feels almost Victorian to me, maybe just pre Victor Edwardian perhaps. Really? Yeah. Right. And so why do you think that the, the woman up here on this level, this med dressed in medieval gowns, why do you think she's still here? What, why is she haunting? She seems, first of all, to be watching, so she's looking at something. So she's, she's living her life out still. She's it's obviously somewhere she was very happy. A woman who, who lived or perhaps came here for social functions. Was she a lady? A Yes. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if she's an officially titled lady, mm. but she, she's, she's very high-born. She's telling me she died of, I think, like a lung, like a lung disease, so it was a natural death, there's not a murder or anything involved. And she's also saying to me, not here, though, she didn't right. die here. I, I seem to be in the countryside with her when she died. Right. Okay. The, the, the name I'm getting is, unfortunately, Elizabeth, and, you know, because mm. I said it's Elizabethan, I'm kind of thinking, mm -hmm. oh, good grief. What sort of activity do you think she would cause up here? I think people will see her, mm -hmm. and they may also hear her gown. You know, that noise. <laughs> when, the rustling. Yeah, that rustling. They may hear that as well, or feel that waft as she goes past. Past. all along the galleries here. Mm. Mm. Okay. Do you want to walk on a bit mm. more? So unusually, our first two astral energies belong to those of a female form. But amongst this labyrinth of halls, corridors and hidden entrances, there also lies a reflection of the isolation and torture that Castle Keep was more than happy to bestow on those who dared to betray their king, queen or country. 
Is there anybody there? Hello? No way. No. Shh. Well, that's it. No, 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 no. Whilst the rest of Newcastle upon Tyne reverberates to the flurry of 21st century life, the city's castle keep stands still and almost silent. But Most Haunted's investigation of this 800-year-old building is just the latest disturbance reported here, with many of the castle's rooms reputedly a centre for paranormal activity. One such area is the mezzanine chamber, where oppressive nausea and ghostly apparitions continually astound the unsuspecting. And are you picking anything up in this particular area? I am, and I'm actually picking up tears. I actually feel a little bit tearful myself. Um, it also feels... <clears throat> it's making me nauseous, it makes me feel sick. And when I get that extreme of, of that sensation, it means, you know, vile death, garroting and hanging and all, all those sorts of things. In this room? No, it doesn't, it, it doesn't feel as if it was in this room. It feels this is a, there's an air of expectancy in this room, so it's more likely to be in a dungeon or a cell or something where there, there is that air of tomorrow this is going to happen. Yeah, you know? what's going to happen today? Yeah, me? absolutely. So is there any particular spirit that's, that's grounded no, and it sounded from behind me, but it was, again, it's yeah, very difficult to pinpoint. It sounded to me like it was over there. I heard, I and it was well, certainly none of you, lot, because I can see all your feet. It's interesting. There's. Sorry, you're on. I just heard something like that. A little yeah. whisper. I had a yeah. whisper as well. Yeah. Oh, and I had a, a bad yeah. Is there anyone up there? Shall I get up there? Doesn't seem to be. There it is again. Listen. Shall I go up the stairs just to see if there's anyone there? Other than those present either in front or behind the camera, no other crew members were on site at this time. Carl and Louis' inspection upstairs discovered what we initially suspected a secure and empty building. And once both men had returned, another point of interest was to arise. So you're, you're picking up on a man? A male figure, he seems to, just what Carl's done, he seems to walk from midway down and down here and then turn here and go in here. This is a doorway that once linked the mezzanine chamber to the garrison room. And although this connection has long since been bricked up, David was able to find this link, as well as hint at Castle Keep's ceremonial past. I think it would have come through over here. It's probably bricked up now. I think it's here, that space there. What? Go point to it. It seems like, it, you know, I know this is marked out in red, but it feels, because that could easily be a window, but it feels like it's, it's this area here. The phrase I've got in my head is like, kings are made and kings are broken, and you, you know, that kind of mm. sensation to it. Um, there's whispering in this room as well, which whispering is always a sign for me of um, politicking, of statemanship. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. Politicking, of statemanship. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. Politicking, of statemanship. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. It's a, it's a band outside. It is a band. It's a marching band outside. Just as I'm saying, states occasions. Yeah. <laughs> it stopped. Oh my! That has to be something outside. There's got to be something outside. Something outside. To say we were intrigued would be an understatement, and with Carl seeing no visible source for our sudden musical interruption, we were left to openly question who or what had been responsible. I'm lost for words. That was mad. Why have we heard that? It, let's say if it is paranormal, why have we heard that? Well, it's it's obvious if you've got to if you've got to go on it, it's obviously at some point, and I'm sure it's true, this was a garrison. Um, at some point around these walls, there would have been soldiers, 
camped out. They would have set off from here. They would have come in here. I was talking about ceremonies and kings being made yes. and kings being destroyed. If you're executing a king, you don't just take him to a little quiet room and you do the big number. And from a skeptic's point of view, did you hear the noise of the marching band outside? I didn't hear the noise. You guys all reacted very strongly to but it. But if so. you had have heard it from a skeptic's point of view, what would you put that down to? I just don't know. I mean, skeptics don't have the answers. I can't necessarily give you an answer. Okay. So, with prisoners of crime and politics, including those of blue blood, thought to still roam here, we decide to show David one more room, an area that, unbeknown to him, once held those facing their darkest hours. I have a sense of a man in the corner, and he's kneeling and praying. He's praying, well, essentially, for his life. He seems specifically to be here, though, because he's been taken from here and, and murdered, or, or executed is probably a better word. Right? Is this your political prisoner, David? It could be a political prisoner, and th there is a crown above his head, so I don't know if any, any kings have been think taken he's from a, here. a political prisoner? Because yeah, he's got the, there, there's the like, a, it's not, it's like it's hovering above his head in my, in my vision. This is land that once switched between English and Scottish rule. So did this historic but hostile battle for power see traitors imprisoned here? And with one Scot having sampled life in Castle Keep, we then invited spiritualist medium Gordon Smith to sample this grand design. I mean, this place really gets me here. I'm surrounded by people. Right. I get the sense of one soul being surrounded by others. It was just. Is there one particular soul that stands out yeah, among the yeah. others? There's a youngish female, a young woman, I'd say, rather than a child. Uh, I don't feel her manacled or chained up or anything like that, but I do know that she's in here and there's such a feeling of sadness. It's almost defeatist. There's a sense of a connection between the two rooms. I mean, I, I want to walk through there. It's like just this horrid, horrid feeling. Anybody who would sense this and had no real sort of psychic awareness mm. would be terrified. Mm. Yeah. People would yeah. see... I heard something. It was like a door banging. Yeah. Sound is the phenomena of this place. Absolutely, it's sound. Interestingly, the Scottish blood that runs through both of our mediums took an instant disliking to an area where more than one Scotsman is known to have suffered. And once more, we had encountered a mystifying amount of auditory phenomena. A few of us had already been privy to the torturous tales that exist within the fabric of this former county jail. But would any of the garrison's room's morose memories transfer into Gordon's psyche? Where would you think the, the door, you know, the other room that mm. we were, where do you think that would have been the connecting door? I'm kind of drawn over here. And Gordon, do you feel that, I mean, psychically? Because obviously there's, there's brickwork there which is different from the stonework. Yeah. And, and so, you know, skeptically, I, I, that, you, know, you might be drawn to that psychologically. Skeptically, I could have been drawn to that yeah. psychological. But that you was the first place I walked. Yeah. Right. I mean, even as Yvette said, where do you feel I was being pulled in that direction? And again, everything I'm feeling down here is all in my gut, mm. which tells me it's a very dense, heavy energy. Mm. It's, it's almost as if this one woman stands out in a crowd, but it's like a pack of dogs. Surrounding it, the people. It's like what they want. Converging on her. There's, there's certainly something that's befell this young woman that is pretty horrific. So far, a predominantly heavy and uncomfortable air has followed both of our psychics around this building. However, one small and enclosed area was about to offer Gordon a little light relief to lift Castle Keep's dark mood. I feel this is more spiritual up here. It's almost like hearing hymns and. There's, there's something in prayer and, right, and people okay. in the, the robes and whatnot. I, I just feel as though there's an essence of, as it goes higher up, it's clearing and clearing and clearing. It's almost like that's the first sign of cleansing or that there's light getting into the place. Okay. And I don't mean bright light, I mean just some kind of spiritual light. Okay. Given the rich history associated with the castles situated in border country, it is no surprise that so many of the memories still held here are of a belligerent nature. Prisoners of the Anglo-Scottish War were often held here, as were latter-day criminals who often found themselves chained to their cell walls. But by contrast, those who were condemned to death often turned to their faith, despite knowing that their fate in this world was already sealed. 
Nightfall signalled our intentions to discover more of Castle Keep's many mysteries, so we decide that two groups are better than one. And with David and Louis leading Richard, Rachel and both Johns into the Great Hall, I joined Gordon, Stuart, Ian and Joe in an area that witnessed so much suffering. Is there anybody here? Try and talk to us if you can. A noise? Hey, come on, you can communicate. All right. Why is that? Come back to flowers. I want to give somebody flowers. Or I'm holding out flowers to people. It's like a flower seller. Right. Like in what was the old play or the my was it all of them at my family? Yeah, yeah. And look. Give another flowers. Okay. Come on, friend. Why are you showing me that? Alright, I'm just letting the light drift down to well. Back into the building. And as I do that, I'm actually feeling. I'm just getting the sense of everything opening up again. Right. Okay, come on. Such a vision of somebody with, again, almost like white head eyes. It's oh, God. Really mm -hmm. strange. And, mm -hmm. But it's not, I'm not frightened of them. They are yeah. frightened themselves. It's like this. Are they here? This is the sense that I'm picking up now. It's almost like, come on, just come out and yeah. be with us. Don't be afraid. She's come down, she's in this room now. She's going round the outsides of this room towards us. Whoa, she's right here. Do you feel a draft, Rachel? Right yeah. between you and me. Yeah. She moved her room. As soon as I said, let's communicate, she's here. She's here. Can you feel it? You it's here. extraordinary. Because she's right here. It was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. Straight away, it's right in my face now as well. Okay, let's see if I can get to her. But she's either carrying, if it's poppies or roses. Now, spiritually, poppies are for remembrance, don't forget me, in other words, and roses are, of course, for love. And she was completely not anyone in society, therefore, she wants to be constantly remembered because no one remembered her actually in life, not death. If that was you, please come closer to us. Please, darling, come closer to us and just impress upon one of us, just touch one of us. We want to remember you, we want to know more about you. Might she be um, interfering with one of my radio mics? What's happening to your radio mic, Johnny? Please, darling, come closer to us and just impress upon one of us. Well, Louis once just it's just died. It, it, there was a fresh battery in it not that long ago, and it's yeah. uh, it's died. But it just went as soon as David started talking. Despite being in separate places at the same time, David and Gordon have both hit upon the Poppy Girl, a local lass whose tale is synonymous with this building. A disputable claim forced her imprisonment here, where it's thought she soon suffered a fatal attack from the many male criminals also held captive. So, with electrical interference and shuffling sounds accompanying our appeals for activity, were we a step closer to knowing just who haunts Castle Keep? What's that? I don't know. I just heard that. Make it so we definitely know you're here. This is 
Castle Keep, a building that for several centuries has both shielded and incarcerated the citizens of Newcastle-upon-Tyne. Thousands upon thousands of different souls have walked its bare and basic floors, but how many have returned from beyond their grave? The early stages of our night vision vigils has separately seen both David and Gordon sense a flowery female, a term more akin to her profession than the manner in which she is thought to have passed. But it's like a pack of dogs surrounding it, the people. It's like what they want converging on her. There's, there's certainly something that's befell this young woman that is pretty horrific. And even more bizarrely, electrical interference and a shuffling of feet have been recorded in the Great Hall, a sign that David feels signals this girl's powerful presence. If that was you that drew the energy, try and do it to... If you can do it once, try and do it again, try and do it with my microphone. If she'd understand what a microphone is, but I suspect she must do. or touch one of us. Better still, please show yourself. She's still close by, David. Yeah. She's a really sorrowful little thing. So is she in visitation then, David? She's around, yeah. I think she's, she's grounded. Not, no. She's not visiting, she's, she's grounded. She's grounded, but she's not residual, she's... No, she's not residual, she's too strong. She's active. Yeah, she's active. This little slip of a thing, although... Yeah could be really powerful, you know? What do you mean by powerful then, David? Powerful enough to cause phenomena, powerful enough to make you feel ill, powerful enough to take over a voice box. I wish she would. She's trying with mine, I can tell you. She's trying with mine. But my voice is drying up because she's trying really hard. I was getting where somebody was actually, as if yeah. everybody came round. Yeah. It was it was just like ravaging somebody. Yeah, yeah. Or... She she sort of like packed, went sort of to the brick wall and then she went. To, yeah. And it was madness. It was it was actually mm -hmm. madness. I was seeing as though people had gone yeah. mad. Yeah. And there was a lot of sickness in this building because that's what I keep feeling. Yeah, yeah. Total sickness. Whoa. Well, yeah. yeah. It sounded like rattling a table. Oh, and another. No, I've not shifted. That was a noise, yeah. In there? Yeah. yeah, over there. Did we put those chairs back? Like, did you put um, that one there? Oh. So hang on a minute, one... Back to front, yeah. No, wait a minute, but one... Did you put one on top of no. the other? No. Did you do it? No, I did not. No, that one's moved. Whoa, come and have a look. Watch careful, just be careful. We didn't put that there. These puzzled expressions didn't alter with our immediate discovery that every other investigator had been back in the crew room for at least 10 minutes prior to us hearing the movement of these chairs. And I, for one, am still at a loss to explain what you have just seen. And now it was time for Carl and Stuart to spend an hour in the mezzanine chamber, the same isolated room that had earlier supplied several strange and unresolved sounds. I just sort of heard like somebody shuffling on the stairs or moving on the stairs. Where's that onion coming from? That's the stairs, it's coming from the stairs. Are you walking up and down these concrete steps? I 
just heard a couple that looked like they were sound like they were behind me. That came from up here, that block of paper. That came from up here, I know it did, I heard it. It was footsteps. Well, they, they were heavy footsteps, but there's no one there. No, there's no one there. And this is what members of the crew have been um, hearing throughout the day, footsteps. And various different things. Well, they, they were heavy footsteps, but there's no one there. No, there's no one there. And this is what members of the crew have been um, hearing throughout the day, footsteps. And various different things. Well, they, they were heavy footsteps, but there's no one there. No, there's no one there. And this is what members of the crew have been um, hearing throughout the day, footsteps. So for a third successive time, this chamber hadn't disappointed. And with both men visibly still, footsteps can clearly be heard very close by. Shh, hey, listen. And a short while after these strange events, Carl accompanied Rachel, Kath and Joe into the captive confines of the garrison room, whilst I joined both mediums and both Johns high up amongst the gods. Ridiculously thick these walls, aren't they? Oh. I think there's another stair here. What? what did you see? What's up? No, I just might have been a car. I don't like this bit, I don't like this bit at all. I thought I heard a hmm. Well. Don't like this bit. A shard. I catching. Really? I'm catching movement. The shards of light coming through look a bit sinister up there. What's that? I'm definitely catching movement. Yeah. Something moving around. I just felt it was always stopped. Yeah. Stop. Yeah, me too. It's exactly how I felt. And I'm prickly all over. Are you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What is that? Was that like a... Like a, like a I don't know, it's some kind of whispering. Yeah. There it is again. Oh, God. <coughs> what? Oh. What? It's definitely around here. Yeah, it is here. Walk and have your mouth open. Walk into it with your mouth open. No? No, I didn't get anything. No. What did you get? I could get it now. It's like a, it's like you're breathing in a load of. Yeah, that's what I was hearing, but I never uh, picked it up in the dead time. No, it's it's a, something like drying. Kind of on drying, it. dust, and what like a smell? No. Like, I've been walking along here, just you know, because we're out of breath. My mouth's like a wheeze. Yeah, and it's like as soon as you come through this bit, as you pick, yeah. it's gone. What's that? That I thought came from no, in there, but it came no. down again here. It seemed to me to come from yeah. down there. Is that someone's in the great hall? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe it has. Nope. No. Nobody there. No one down in the great hall. No. Definitely heard yeah. noise. Yeah. Definitely. Hello? Hello? Is there anybody there? I don't know. I just heard that. Sounds like chanting. What, what did you hear? What did you hear? I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. If you're, ch if there are monks around here that are chanting in this room. Make it so we definitely know you're here. Okay, 
away from out there. One of Castle Keep's biggest secrets is embedded in its very foundations. We already knew that this part of the garrison room was built on a cemetery, but extensive research has since revealed that a church is also likely to have made way for this building's construction in the 12th century. Add this to the chapel that lies just along this same ground floor corridor, and we may well have a reason for the religious overtones that had stunned this vigil. But how many more shocks still stood in our way? The kingdom come, they will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Please. Take a step inside Castle Keep and you're greeted with a grim reminder of the lives that were lost in and around this ancient part of Newcastle-upon-Tyne. And Most Haunted's investigation here offers even more intrigue with each passing hour, particularly along the ground floor. And having just heard a chant similar to that of a monk, Carl decides to leave Rachel, Kath and Joe in the garrison room and head towards the chapel. And high above these events, in a separate gallery vigil, David was presenting a vision of what might lie in store. So, is there anybody here? I can sense, all I can sense is kind of like a threat and a and danger. I just feel like running. Yeah. Almost a, yeah. an energy coming. Coming at you, yeah. yeah. And is it a male energy or...? It feels more male to yeah. me than female, definitely. And they're here now? Well, it's, it's almost like a... I can't sense them right here. It's <coughs> like a... It's a threat to me. It's a threat of yeah. them coming towards me. <sighs> I'm scared. I'm not happy about being on my own in this. Please, while I'm in here, try to charm. What could they do? <laughs> Sounds like something was in there. Please, if you'll buy these gravestones, make a sound. That's a gravestone. Hello? If I say a prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. No way, no That's it, no, I can't, I can't go. Hello? Crying out loud. I'm so scared. 
I'm just going to show you in here. I hope I call that one. There is, there's, there's no one in here. There is no one in this room. And there's a light. Yeah, I'm in here. You okay? I've just, I've just done. I've just done the. Oh, I've just, I just started to do the Lord's Prayer. And there's no, but the, the gravestones that there are going like there's banging coming from the gravestones, actually from the, the stones. One seemed to be the stone outside that square bit, yeah. and then I've just done it being there again. Uh, it seemed to be banging from this little piece here. I came out there, carried on, and then it came from back to where the gravestones are. But it, 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 it's, it's agitated, and I don't, I'm not sure whether I want to. I think maybe. We could, hear it from here. could you? Yeah. We could hear it down there. So, with the new day dawning, has another ecclesiastical energy been caught in sound, if not in vision? Our other attempts to capture supernatural phenomena may have ultimately proved fruitless, but in a building that echoes to the sounds of sickness and suffering more than any other emotion, we were left to ask why did we hear so much yet see so little? Are we dealing with phenomena of a paranormal or psychological kind, or possibly both? Scientific analysis of our tapes may help to answer these questions. In order to establish whether an object has moved paranormally, you need to have continuous video footage of it moving. Did we put those chairs back? Like that. Did you put that um, one there? Oh. So hang on a minute, one back to front. Yeah. No, wait a minute, but one. Did you put one on top of no. the other? No. Stuart. No, 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 no one's moved. Wow. Unfortunately, we don't have that footage in this particular case, and so there are a number of sceptical explanations for its movement. No way. No. <laughs> that's it. No, I can't. I can't go. Hello. Richard Felix is a great proponent of the stone tape theory and sees the feelings and the experiences that the mediums had as being evidence of this particular theory. What he may be missing is the fact that it could be perfectly natural. We could be looking at magnetic field, we could be looking at uh, the occurrence of infrasound in particular locations and the mediums both experiencing the same thing. It doesn't have to be a paranormal experience. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. It's, it's a band outside. It stopped. Oh my That has to be something outside. There's got to be something outside. Now, given that this particular auditory phenomena occurred on David Wells' walk-around when they're in the garrison, which has a military connection, it's quite impressive phenomena. You'd have to be 100% certain that that sound was not coming from anywhere else outside of the castle. And also, my first reaction to it is to ensure that nobody listening to the actual tape recording would be reading into the sound that they heard something military. By this I mean some sort of auditory pareidolia. Pareidolia means finding pattern in randomness. So what may actually have occurred may have been a noise from outside, some tapping sounds, and then an interpretation of it that has a military slant. Assuming that it was none of these, then it's very impressive auditory footage. We came to try and unravel the mysteries of Castle Keep, yet despite hiding a millennium or more of memories, we also leave with the belief that this part of Newcastle still has a lot more to offer. Until next time, sleep tight. Hello and welcome to Most Haunted. I've brought you to Warwick to a place that's seen murder, demon beasts and imprisonment. But more importantly, this place is supposedly riddled with ghosts. 
but just how paranormally active is Warwick Castle? Well, to give us an idea and find out what we're all letting ourselves in for tonight, we asked Carl and Stuart to spend last night completely on their own in the dungeon. Are you here? Yeah. There's supposed to be something seen up there. Is there? Yeah. Dark oh. shadow. My eyes are slowly getting used to this, and I forgot that was up there. It's a gibbet cage, isn't it? How are you feeling, Stu? I'm all right. I'm just trying to settle in at the moment. Just get me there into it. There's a pit under here. There's a lower. There's a lower. Uh, under there, there's another dungeon. Can we get down that? Oh, what a shame that is. Well, why don't, tomorrow night, but why don't we see if we can get a... Yeah. See if we can get it open and get in there, yeah. Get your own down. Okay. Yeah. 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 There we go. Come on, Stuart, get in there. Oh. Anyway, Stuart, I'm not going to kiss you goodnight, but goodnight. Goodnight, mate. So it seems we're in for an interesting and active 24 hours here at Warwick Castle. saw this site's first fort, a wooden construction that eventually made way for stone in 1260. And the addition of further halls and towers throughout the Tudor, Jacobean and Victorian eras has produced the castle that greets so many visitors today. Numerous noblemen have lived here, but while some passed in tranquil circumstances, others suffered a less than peaceful demise. Bigotry and betrayal lie behind more than one tale, and it's based on these events that staff and visitors believe spectres to still stroll these grand but ghostly floors. The Kingmaker attraction is housed in the oldest part of the castle and is said to be the most haunted. With dark shadows, strange feelings and ghostly footsteps, this truly is a frightening place to be but it's the specific hauntings that scare me the most. The screams of a woman and the cries of a baby are often heard echoing throughout this lower chamber. They're thought to belong to a mother and a baby that are supposedly buried behind a wall. Many people have seen the horrific apparition of a severed body right here by the fireplace. Throughout the years, this dungeon has known much misery and pain, and even today is a place of fear and dread. Many people feel very distressed in here, disorientated and restlessness. But what's causing these feelings? Many people attribute it to the figure of a large man who's thought to be a jailer, and he's seen many times standing behind a steel gate. One very interesting story concerning Daisy, Countess of Warwick. She used to hold seances upstairs in one of the bedrooms. On one occasion, she reported that after the Ouija board that she used, all of her guests were so terrified that they never came back to the castle again. It is said Sir Falk Greville haunts here. He was a scholar, poet, 
and politician. He was a well-liked man by friends and workers alike. But when he discovered he was only to acquire 20 pounds from his master's will, Falk's manservant Haywood was filled with rage and decided to plan a grisly revenge. One night, as his master was preparing for the evening, Haywood, in a moment of madness, took a knife and without warning, plunged it into Falk, fatally wounding him. However, eaten up by guilt, he stabbed and killed himself some days later. Since his murder, Sir Falk Greville has been seen many times around the tower, but mainly by this portrait, which has been known to come to life. I do believe that he likes to watch over Warwick Castle and say, look, I put the castle right in 1600s. You keep it right today. That's what I like to think. But I would say he's our most famous ghost. There are others that people will speak of. There is a story of a newspaper reporter who is quite a cynic who stopped in the ghost tower, in the Watergate tower. We call it the ghost tower, but it's the Watergate. And he was quite cynical. And the following morning when they let him out, he had bruises on his arms where a, a, a hand had grabbed him. And they, we a, actually had a doctor examine it and he definitely said it was finger marks. stories associated with this amazing castle and some terrifying but parapsychologist Kieran O'Keefe was keen to share his concerns about our night in this ancient location now this place is enormous for me I know that people will get really lost and they will get separated and I think that's gonna sort of up the ante in the scare I am genuinely concerned about the investigation for that reason because we have done some very big locations and we've talked before about escape, being in doing a lone vigil for example or just two people and if something were to happen, like you say, they will get lost, they just won't be able to find their way back. One thing that is a little bit off-putting, or I know will be scary later on, is that they do have a lot of dummies here, they're very, very lifelike. We're going to have a lot of people doing double takes and thinking that they've seen a ghost, thinking that they've seen somebody standing there. So it's going to be paramount that we have video evidence. We need that objective backup where we've got the film to actually show uh, hopefully an apparition. Now, what about experiments here at Warwick Castle? Because there's been particular areas, for instance, the dungeon, um, where many people have felt uneasy, distressed, um, dizziness, you know, the classic sort of um, cases that, that we've worked on. What I'd like to do in the dungeon is actually set up an experiment where we're looking for the presence of infrasound. Sound that is below 20 hertz. And we know from previous research that the sort of experiences people have when they're exposed to infrasound match the experiences that people have in a haunted location. So you might get a sense of presence, you might get a tightening in the chest or just a weird sensation. You might even get corner of the eye phenomena and that can all be created by infrasound. The difficulty is, is finding the source of it. So it could be naturally occurring infrasound because of the structure of the dungeon and the corridor or because of heavy traffic locally. There could be a number of different reasons. With Kieran's infrasound experiment set, it was time to introduce our medium David Wells and guest medium Ian Lawman to this vast building. What activity would they pick up and would they introduce us to any of the spirits that roam Warwick Castle? She's got a white shift and it's just covered in blood. Okay. She ran out of the room and didn't want to be in here ever again. It's almost as if she summoned up the devil. Please make your presence known. Lying at the heart of England, Warwick Castle may hold a special place in the nation's affections, but could medium David Wells, guest medium Ian Lawman, and a team of investigators sense who or what walked the infamous Warwick Castle? David's first port of call was the Undercroft, a place that many people have experienced ghostly phenomena. Could this activity be caused by the ghost of a young girl who is thought to have been murdered and her body buried behind a wall? When I get down here, I'm aware of um, 
of a girl, of a little girl, early teens, 13, maybe 14. Um, right, yeah, this seems. Um, a bit more like her. Is it. The, 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 there is a name, it's kind of like Rosalie or Rosemary, you know, that kind of, that kind of name with her. Um, the, what she's saying to me now is. It's something about warming their bed. You know, an expression she's using, it's kind of like they used us to warm their beds. But I certainly know what that translates to. What, so a master had relations forced, with a, mm, oh, forced? Forced himself on her. Um, Not on the 13 year old. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah, she's definitely drawing me to the Sarah. So she might be under the floor or behind a wall or something. He's either beaten her to death or, um, Whilst pregnant? No, there's a baby. The baby's there. Oh, the baby's been yeah, born. Yeah, I think the baby's born. But there's a big, there's a big cover-up. Everything is, like, sealed up, covered up. Her demeanour's changed. She's not playful. She's just very... Her head's down. Her head's down, and they're kind of... She's got a white shift, and it's just covered in blood, which is where I got the beating thing from. OK. Can you mentally ask her to maybe do something or show a sign or call out if you feel that she's here, just to give us some sort of... Yeah, I can, I can call out yeah. and say, OK. If there's a spirit of a little girl who wants to communicate with us, could you please make your presence known? Could you maybe make a knocking sound, tapping sound? Touch one of us? I could have sworn I heard when you said a knocking sound. A very dull, dull... Boom, boom, boom. Very, very faint. Could you try again? Please make that sound louder, if you can. There's something very, very faint there. I don't know where it came from. So was David Wright. Was the spirit of Rosa Lee trying to communicate with him? And would we encounter her later during the investigation? The dungeon was a place that has affected many visitors and guests alike. It was also a place where Kieran had set up his infrasound experiment. Was the activity experienced here scientifically based, or was there an unsettled spirit that wanted attention? There, there's the obvious residuals, there's screaming and shouting in French, particularly with this French language in here as well. There's a huge din. Um, it doesn't feel like... It's this dungeon there, it's, it's not, it doesn't feel like, you know, hot irons and the old doodars on the old private so or any of that business. It doesn't feel... It feels more actually just shackled up and left and forgotten about and they're squirming around in their own faeces and... Really? A bit of a bit of an old leg of mutton thrown in now and again to keep however many were in here. I'm sure at times it was packed. Is there any any activity in here? I'm really drawn to these. I noticed them when I first came in. They're all over the place. You see them? Oh, yeah. Look, and that's what I can hear. Okay. That's what I can hear in my head. Watergate Tower has a reputation as being the most haunted place in the whole of the castle. Would David pick up on the grisly murder of Sir Falk Greville? And would he be able to tell us if it is his ghost that is causing so much mayhem? Is there anybody here, David? There's definitely someone active in this building. He doesn't feel threatening. If anything, he feels um, hospitable, I guess, in a sense. That's the word I'd use, he feels hospitable. He's quite small. Um, and it's, he has a, you know, it's Elizabethan, so he's got that rough, mm -hmm. that Elizabethan rough. Um, Is somebody but else tapping? I'm yeah, so good. I, it's I heard it as well. Two at a time, tap, 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 tap. It's been happening for the last few minutes while you've been talking, I just from yeah. through here. From here, this area. Do so I think this one could be quite playful? There you go. There Come on, I know you're here. Please make your presence known. <laughs> Is that him? <laughs> Is that face just leapt out at me? You're kidding. It just sort of went oh. right out and in. I wonder if that's him. I think we need to go upstairs. OK, let's go. It's after you. Ah, you can go first. He's 
very active here. It, it's like he lives here. He's um, he's putting pain here, across my stomach. Mm -hmm. And I've got him lying in a bed with this this part bleeding. And I think it's got something to do with money. So he's been murdered over money. How how I was going to say how did he get this wound? Through an illness a, or a knife. Oh right. No, this is bleeding. It's physically open. So he was stabbed. Yeah. Yeah, there's wounds that are physically open. And it was to do and with money. They've gone putrid. He's died of the wounds. And it's it's gone it's got to the point where it's where it's red raw and it's seeping, so it's not immediate death. That's so do mean. you get an idea of who he is then or what his job would have been? I want to say Guy Fox, but I know it's not Guy Fox. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not Guy Fox. No, he's got a roughy collar. Um and he wasn't involved in any of that. He wasn't even around in that time, I don't think. Um, this is 1600, around that time. I think people will feel him brushing past them. They'll maybe hear, you know, mm -hmm. shuffling. They might, um, they might have a sense of him around, but they won't get this. I don't think they'll get this. Who did that to him? A servant. It seemed like a servant murdered him. Okay. Yeah, we were quite good for a like, seance okay. in here as well, wouldn't it? That'd be a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and table. Yeah. Because I think he'll play. Oh, that's good. We yeah, like a bit of playing, play, don't yeah. we? Come on then. In the main body of the castle lies a room that has a strange history. The Kenilworth bedroom was used by the Countess of Warwick to conduct seances during the Victorian era. So frightening were these seances that the room was closed for many years. Would guest medium Ian Lawman shed more light on what might have occurred here many years ago? Do you pick up on, on anything in here? It's almost as if spiritual people was in here. Spiritual people did things in here. In what way? What, what do you mean, spiritual people did things? I, I see a lady particularly who I, I feel would have stood here it's almost as if she summoned up the devil, you know, as, as heavy as that, and she just ran out. She ran out of the room and didn't want to be in here ever again. I'm getting the name of Daisy. Mm -hmm. Daisy. She's got quite a young face. You know, doesn't look that old. 30s, maybe 30, 36, somewhere around there. But she's, all, she's got a sternness to her face as well. I feel she would have been broader around the hips and, and a skirt would have, or a dress would have flowed out. Do mm -hmm. you understand? It mm -hmm. would have flowed out, it would have gone to the floor. I feel she would have had shoulders that would come out slightly and it would come down tighter to a cuff. Mm -hmm. But then also I've got like a, a band around the neck with some, um, like embroidery mm -hmm. around her neck. Are you picking up on the fear that those people felt, I'm definitely pick, picking up on the fear, but I also felt that they let something in that shouldn't have come in. I feel that for some reason that particular day she let a guard down. Well, it's almost as if something, you know, something stronger came in that she couldn't control. And is that something stronger st still within the ether, do I you still, think? I still feel that, yeah, it's still within this room. So it's something not, not nice is no, in here? No, not at all, no. So if we did a seance, we could encounter the same... Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Fright that they encountered. Yes. Oh, that sounds a bit. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds. Yeah, a... that sounds and are you happy? Are you happy to be? You know, obviously we have David. Are you happy to be a part of that? Yeah, I think it'd be very interesting to see what does happen in here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, nothing could happen, but you never know something. No, that's could. right. Both David and Ian had given us an insight into where the most active places in the castle were. One of the most intriguing places had to be the dungeon. During David's investigation earlier on in the day, Stuart had to leave due to sickness. Stuart's going to be sick? Mm -hmm. well, does, how does everybody else feel in here? How do you feel, Carl? I don't feel good now. I don't feel brilliant now, but then again, yeah, I've just watched Stuart leave, so I don't have psychosomatic. How do you feel, John? Well, like Carl says, it's damp and claustrophobic, so it's, it's not a nice place to be. I feel absolutely fine. I feel absolutely fine. The dungeon certainly had affected some of us, but was Kieran's scientific theory regarding infrasound correct? Well, one result transpired midway through the investigation. Any noise recorded at less than 20 hertz can be identified as infrasound. And compared to his earlier control test readings, this peak of around 16 hertz certainly intrigued the parapsychologist, who would continue to monitor this area throughout the day. 
Over the years, so many people have experienced strange, ghostly phenomena here. Would the most haunted crew last the night? And if so, what would we experience at Warwick Castle? Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so... oh. oh, what was that? Oh, my God. What was that? Shut up! Warwick Castle in the dark was not a pretty prospect. With our cameras turned to night vision, we began by investigating the Watergate Tower. Carl, Stuart, Ian and Richard began by sitting quietly in the bedchamber, where they tried to contact the spirit of Sir Falk Greville. Oh, it stood still. You stood still? You're joking. I've not moved, I haven't moved <coughs> here. Filming Ian's head. I thought it was him walking around. I thought that was you walking around. I haven't stood here while you've been like... Is he still here, Ian? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to hold him here for him <coughs> to so we can communicate. Listen, listen, listen. I'm trying to hold him here for him <coughs> to so we can communicate. Listen, <coughs> listen, listen. It's all over, it's all over the place. You right, Ian? Yeah, yeah, fine. Are you sure you saw something move over there? I actually felt the floorboard move underneath my foot then. Would he have hidden the fact that it was homosexual? It would have, yeah. well, I know, I, it was a yeah. hanging offence. But uh, I, I believe that Ralph actually murdered him, in, in not just for money. I think there was more to it. What was that? Something moving. Actually, something moving. It was like a dragging, something yeah. dragging. Listen. Yeah, Sir Falk, I'm suggesting that, that you were having liaisons with, with various men in London. Oh. And that I, I believe that you were murdered because you were a homosexual. And that you were actually having affairs with other people, including Sir Philip Sidney. Shut up! Shit! And that you were actually having affairs with other people, including Sir Philip Sidney. Shut up! Shit! You're right. Well, we're obviously getting through, if that's... <laughs> With ghostly footsteps and sickness already having been experienced, we were all eager to split into groups. Richard Felix, Kieran and Kath had taken a small group to the Undercroft, where the ghost of a 13-year-old girl is said to roam. Carl and Stuart had decided to brave it alone in an oubliette, a small cell found underneath the main dungeon floor. I was keen to investigate the Watergate Tower for myself. I chose to take with me David, Ian and the rest of the team. If there's anyone here, if there's any presences here in the astrals, would you please make yourself known? Touch one of us, make a sound. Can you hear distant talking? Yeah, I yeah, can. Yeah, I can. I was just, just about quite, to say it. it. They'd be too far away to hear them, wouldn't they? You would have thought so. Just be quiet. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, you hear that? You definitely, definitely yeah. had that. Jeez. Yeah. That was loud. How do you feel, mate? Uh. I feel scared. Do you know, I'm there now. Why am I this nervous about going down there? I don't know. Well, because people have died down there, that's why. Okay. It's about as one tight fit, isn't it? You're going to come down there pretty quick, Coming straight down. Coming straight down. Don't panic. OK, mate, take your time. Take your time now. 
you know? I've not been like this before. No, no. Have you ever known me to be like this before? Never. Okay, okay, take your time, take your time. If you're not sure, come back straight out. Can I just have my camera? Yeah, I'll turn just, it round, mate, so you've got some light. Thanks, mate. Okay. Okay. That's great. I'm going to pull this to one side. I can't see shit. Oh. Am I coming down now, Carl? Hang on. Hang on, Stu. Stu? Yeah. Come on down, mate. Oh. Oh. Your feet are on the... Oh. That's it, you're on the bottom now. This is narrow, this. You all right, Stu? Yeah. I'm going to touch your leg. It's me touching oh. your leg. Just let you know I'm here. You all right, mate? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my jacket's coming above my head. Hang on. That's, that's the worst bit, because it makes you feel even worse. Oh, my jacket is. <laughs> you all right, Stu? Oh, how bad is this? Too hey. bad. It's bad. Oh, oh. Shit. God. Okay, yeah, mate. There was a camera here. What's that sticking out of there? Where? Ooh. What is it? I don't know. I mean, bearing in mind, this is where people have forgotten. I don't like this at all. It's flying all over yet. Yeah, yeah, I don't like it in here, mate. One bit, I really don't. It's actually quite stuffy down here, isn't it? There's not much. I, feel, I just feel, I feel dizzy. Yeah, I, really I, I dizzy. do. Yeah, yeah. Is anyone here? Any astral being? Yeah, show yourself to us. You don't scare us. If you're a prisoner in here and you want freedom, we can help you. Please come to us. Show us you're here, please. You don't scare us and we don't want to scare you. What was that? Yeah, what was that? Then? You don't scare us and we don't want to scare you. What was that? Yeah, what was that? Then? Sounds like a screaming sound. Where did it come from? Where did it sound like it came from? What's that? It came from actually in within the cell. That's you, Wiley. Come down here, please, if you would. Is there anyone up there? Hello? I mean, honestly, don't you expect him to? He's, he's yeah. coming for it. He's dreadful. What's up? I just thought I thought I saw something. That was weird. My eyes playing tricks, but it was like right Corner by of my your face. Eye. No, but like right by my face. What, like it passed you? Like something went right by me. Oh, it didn't look like a figure. Just a shape. Just no, a just something going shadow. across like that. Wow. Please do make a big effort and try and do something. Please tap on something in response now. Let me know if you're here. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just, I had been focusing on this guy. Just because oh. something to concentrate on, because we're all looking in different directions. Mm. Richard kept on talking, and then as he was going to the end, the reason why I flinched is because suddenly it looked like he was breathing kind of... He's joking! Oh. 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 You know, in that creep... I know it's just my eyes playing tricks on me because I was concentrating on but he just felt like... Mm. It was almost like he started breathing. And at that instant where he started breathing, he also looked as though he was going to stand. And that's why I was like... <laughs> oh, oh, why? And yeah, yeah. <laughs> If there's anyone here, could you please make a sound? Oh. What was that? His uh, footstep. Oh, yeah, I heard that then. Oh, shit. Hell. Oh, yeah, I heard that then. Oh, shit. Hell. There is a noise. There's definitely footsteps. Out 
sure there's no one down there. No. Well, we shut the door, didn't we? we yeah. Here, didn't I shut we? both doors as well. Yeah, we did. Mm. Well, just keep asking out. Yeah, go on, David. If there's anyone here, could you please make that sound again or another sound? What the f was what that? was that? That was the bed moving. If there's anyone here, could you please make that sound again or another sound? What the f was what that? was that? That was the bed moving. Is there anybody here? Is there a spirit person here? A spirit man? That would like to talk to us, like to communicate with us? Were you murdered? Was that you? Did you feel that? No. Uh, on the floor? No. Oh. It was like a thump on the floor. I actually felt it rather than heard it. Is he here? Is he still yeah, here? Yeah, he's just... Yeah, I feel a bit uncomfortable here. I don't know, because it's so dark and there's a... You can see there's a, there's a doorway there. That doesn't help. Well, where's the door go? Don't know. Come on, let's go find out. Warwick Castle was a vast and frightening place and my vigil in the Watergate Tower was unnerving. Carl and Stuart were also suffering with nerves down in the oubliette. What the f is that? What? What's up? Like a, like a whining sound. Do you want me to pop my head up and have a quick look? Yeah, uh, let's try and go. If there's anybody here in this dungeon with us now, can you please show us a sign? Touch one of us, make a sound, push one of... Shh! Ooh, ooh, what was that? Are you here? Let me just go around there, mate, where that hole is. What, look up? Yeah, well, as good as I can get without struggling, I mean. Is there any issue? No, I can't, uh, I can't see anything. No. I can't. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I'm just falling all over the show, mate. I can't bloody see a thing here. This is ridiculous. Is there any spirits here? Me and Carl have come all the way down here. And it hasn't been easy. It's been a tight squeeze. The least you can do is show yourself. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You coward. Hello? Are you here? Are you here? Is that you trying to warn us off? Do you wish us to leave? If so, show us another sign. Push one of us, try and affect one of us. That definitely came from next door to me. I'd be lying if I was to say you don't frighten us. Because I'm frightened now, Carl. Oh. What's that in there, John? It's a room. Oh, it's just back downstairs, I think that's where it's What was that? Oh, oh my god. What? It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> it's okay. What happened? It's all right, just stay calm. I'll see you. No one was moving. And then... It was... That's what I'm saying, someone upstairs. Oh, what? Oh, what the f is that? Was... That's what I'm saying, someone upstairs. Oh, what? Oh, what the f is that? There's someone upstairs. No, it's not. Is anyone up there? I mean, it sounds like someone upstairs. There's somebody upstairs. Is anyone up there? What the f was that? No one was leaning against there. No. That's what weird. That's what freaked me out. Who is up there? Who is anyone above us next to the bed? Go on, make the noise again then. Shit. 
Right, I'm standing next to you, so I know that it's not you. And I know yeah, that yeah. you are standing well away from there, and Ian's next to me. I can't understand that. That really freaked me out. That was really loud. It's not. I mean, nothing. Nothing. You I mean, weren't really moving, moving. No, were you? no, it wasn't moving. I was static. What's in this doorway? It did open. Oh, I tried that and it wouldn't open. Oh, oh. oh, wow. What's that? It's oh, moving. Mate. Where, where does this go? I don't know. It's like a labyrinth, isn't it? It's like another doorway. It is. Another room. Shit. Do you know what? I'm really scared. Well, you want to try standing at the back of the line? Oh my god. <laughs> Nothing's going to touch you. What? Okay. Oh, we're back in the main room. Oh, oh how bizarre. Who's deck are we? Are any spirits up there with us? What is that? Whoa, what was that? Cal? Whoa, what was that, Cal? That came from Hello? right next door to me. That came from right next door. Are you here? Oh, oh Jesus oh, Christ. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa, Cal, where's it? That, that's coming from outside, that, mate. Are you sure? Because it feels like it's right next to me. Come on, do something, you coward. Oh, fuck. Did something just fall on us? It doesn't solve the problem, does it? Nah. Oh, f***! What was that? Oh, f***! What was that? Stuart's reaction was to a sound right behind him, which, when slowed down, could either be attributed to loose debris from the oubliette ceiling or something far more malicious. It was time to begin a seance, and where better to open a circle than in the Kenilworth room? The last time a seance was held here was in the Victorian era, led by the Countess of Warwick. The sitting became so frightening that everyone fled terrified. Would we make contact with the alleged spirits that are thought to haunt this room? And if so, what would they do? Is there a child here? Uh, there's a, I have a man here. Okay. Richard, would uh, would Americans visit here? Yeah. Okay. Got a link then. Okay. Is this gentleman American? Yeah. <clears throat> if there is a gentleman spirit here, are you American? If you are, please tap or bang or move the table. We can hear you if that's you that's tapping, but we need you to make it much louder if you can. Oh, wow. John, it's really loud. Thank you very much. We can hear you now. Please knock once for yes and twice for no. OK. Are you... Um, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Please knock once for yes and twice for no. OK. Are there other spirit people here in this room? Could you knock out how many there are? Still I would. Still Is that something like 14? 17. 17. OK. Sir, please, are we in any danger? Yes. It seems so strange that after a series of loud and responsive knocks, and even after a warning, all went quiet. From strange lights, bumps and bangs to being hit, Warwick Castle certainly didn't disappoint and had given us plenty to think about. Out of all the unexplained occurrences, the most curious has to be Stuart's experience down in the Oubliette. 
something fell on him, and whatever it was seemed to be thrown and with force. To be quite honest with you, I, I was slightly apprehensive at Warwick um, because it has actually been branded as a haunted place. Uh, they were actually exploiting the fact that they, they, they've got ghosts by changing the name of one of the towers into the ghost tower. So I wasn't too sure about it. Ian didn't get possessed, but, but this guy certainly came through him. SHUT UP! <laughs> Whatever was in that room was, was around us. It was that side, and then we heard it over that side. Then we heard it behind us. And we were all on the bed, and there was only Ian. Now, he was standing, filming us. I thought that was you walking around. I've been stood here while you've been on. He couldn't be over there and over there. There was no one there, or at least there was no one there alive. And after that, I am totally convinced that that the Watergate, or as it's now called, the Ghost Tower, is most definitely haunted. So remember, the auditory phenomena was not experienced in one particular area of the room. It was actually almost as though a spirit or somebody was walking around the bed. Now this means that we can discount possibly uh, a floorboard or a pipe or some natural source of sound. However, because of the phenomena that they experienced, I went in and did a vigil with some others, including David Wells and John Dibley, and we did experience similar sounds. You could stand in one part of the room and stand on a floorboard, and it would actually cause a sound in another part of the room. And this is a possibility for what happened. She was going to be sick. We need to assess exactly the state of mind or the state of health that Stuart was in at the time and possibly what he'd eaten immediately prior to the experience or earlier on that day. And certainly Stuart had eaten different food to the rest of the crew and there's a strong possibility it may have been that that caused him the sickness. All in all, I would say that Warwick Castle was a really interesting investigation, but in terms of the phenomena that was captured, I wouldn't say that we're dealing with an impressively haunted location. Ghost hunting at Warwick Castle has been unforgettable. From me, Yvette Fielding, and the rest of the Most Haunted crew, sleep tight. Hello, I'm Yvette Fielding, and this week I've brought Most Haunted to Port Talbot and Margam Castle. Now, although originally built in the 1830s, it's thought that there's been continuous habitation on this site for over 4,000 years. complex an investigation will this prove to be? We're here to explore a building that is less than two centuries old, yet stands on land that actually housed Bronze Age settlers. Markham's parkland also resonates to religious overtones too. The abbey walls may be all that remains in sight, but do apparitions of its former occupants still catch the unsuspecting by surprise? Inside, this stunning building has largely recovered from the fire that gutted its rooms in 1977. But most now remain empty, containing only the castle's frequent visitors and the spectres who made their mark on Margam's past. With so much history and so many ghosts, I decided to volunteer myself and John Gilbert to spend last night completely alone and in the dark. And this is what happened. Okay, here we are. It's the night before. This is one scary, scary, scary. There's little alcoves everywhere. I hate it. Oh, what was that? It's just it's the roof. roof. 
do something to let us know. Something that we know isn't the wind or the storm. <gasps> I've got to get out. I've, I've well, right through here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you hear that? Yes. Where did it come from? I thought it came from where exactly where we're going to. <gasps> let's go up there. Let, let's go where we don't want to go. Think rational, think rational, think rational. I don't want to be, I don't want to stand here. Do you mind if I just oh, go onto yeah. that landing and have okay, a look? Okay, I'll come with you. You, you. I'm not staying on my own. I just think we should explore. Oh, for f**k's sake, you f**k joking. No, it just goes on forever. Oh, 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 no, 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 no,
and it took a while to realise it was one of the sash windows blowing, but it sounded very convincing. So tonight it's going to be a very, very interesting investigation. It's a vast place, it's huge, so we can really split up and, yes. and really enjoy investigating. We've got a wide range of different scenarios, locations, indoors and outside, and of course we've got 4,000 years of history. It's certainly a building that deserves to be haunted. 4,000 years of history may be amassed within this small corner of South Wales, but how much of that past still resonates here? Medium David Wells and guest psychic Kevin Wade would soon provide an answer. Markham Castle may outwardly look cold and callous, but just how chilling would our stay here prove to be? There's certainly something that doesn't want us here. Bare knuckle animal ripping apart paganism. So it's all to do with children. The mouth is filling with blood. It's death, so I know it's to do with the, the black death. Oh. Ooh, someone's on the stairs! Someone was on the stairs! Margham Castle stands tall in parkland near to Port Talbot. But does its grand exterior offer us a true indication of those said to haunt both inside and out? And with medium David Wells ready to step inside the main hall, our investigation of this massive location could begin. This is one of those places for me that there is a lot of noise. There's an odd mix of everything from Catholicism right down to bare knuckle animal ripping apart paganism. You know, that's, it's, oh, it's banging. It's very windy, isn't it? It's very yes, windy. it's windy, it might just be. That wasn't, that was, that was, that was straight from upstairs. You talk about the snarling, what's mm. that about? The snarling is, um, there is, there, there's certainly something making itself known to me that doesn't want us here. You know when I do that to you, yeah. uh, when I do that to yeah. you, that's what they do to me, they literally go Rrr. to me. Oh, that was over there. That was in this room. Let's go over. They're oh, definitely strong. Do you feel that there's anybody here watching us now or around us? I can hear children running around. I How many? Definitely. About three or four. About okay. three or four. Anyway. What's the matter? I'm sorry. I've just had the shit scared out of me upstairs. I went upstairs and I heard a noise. It could, it, the first noise I heard could have been, I don't know, something, a window or something in its, in its thing. Then I heard three together, bang, bang, bang. And I actually said, hello, are you here? And something ran towards me here. <gasps> Should we go? And, yeah. I guess we should go. Because you you heard footsteps earlier on today. That's right. But I thought it, when we looked later, I I assumed the sash window was banging. That's exactly what cars just said. So I thought that oh that sounded like it, but when I first heard it, I did think it was footsteps. Let's go up there, Carl. Do you want to lead the way and show us where it happened? Can I just say before we go, there's a man on the staircase watching us. Well, who is he then? I don't know, maybe when we go up there, but Come he's on. just leaning on that metal post watching us. Mm. Well, what I saw was, um, we were down here, weren't we? Yeah. So it was a real purposeful stare. Can you see, what, what did he look like? He looked a um, Victorian man, uh -huh. um, but, but casually dressed. He wasn't, he wasn't smartly dressed, he was casually dressed. Okay. But I'm not sure if this is the one that's... That's the snarler? Yeah, okay. yeah. This one was a, what are you doing here? You're saying you got, are you all right? I just don't feel very comfortable. Even really? before I came to the location, it felt odd. <gasps> quick, quick. Someone follow, someone follow. What's the matter? Just uh, nothing, just I feel really that's odd. That's not nothing. No, I felt like, you know... No, I don't know. I felt... I, I almost saw the place whole, complete. Really? Yeah, I really like that. And the name Robert. This is the man on the stairs. This yeah. is the aggressive one. Yeah, yeah. He he is aggressive. He doesn't he doesn't want us here. But it's the it's separate to the other man, the one in your face. I yeah. I think there's there's something else here, and I'm not sure if it's even attached to just the house. It could be from the grounds as well. Okay. Because it feels older. Right. Do you know what I mean? The house feels a lot younger than this this face. Okay. Carl was soon able to provide an insight on the noise downstairs. <gasps> which may have come from a loose stone that we'd found. 
However, we'd agreed that it was physically impossible that this stone had been dislodged from the area of the first floor where the crew were all stood still. And Margam Castle was about to drive us all up the wall with its auditory phenomena, which suddenly accelerated as I asked for further communication with either of the men that David had just seen. Are you male? Please knock three times for yes. Three, yeah. Okay. Is your name Robert? Knock three times if your name is Robert. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. Do you mean us harm? Yes, that's three for yes, yes. Can can you ask him if he's affecting me? It's like this yeah. whole area. No, no, that was it. Yeah. And two more. <clears throat> are you affecting David? Please knock three times clearly if you are affecting David. This whole area here feels like it's opening up. Okay. Well, the impression I've got is that he didn't die here. He died maybe outside here in the ground somewhere. Uh -huh. I see him being attacked by someone else. He's been attacked by someone else. Um, and this, this part here is open up, so whether you've been shot or stabbed or... But this, this, there's pain right across my chest and, and actually my, my upper abdomen. Okay. There's pain there. And my mouth is filling with blood. Was it an accident? Suicide? Murder? Murder. murder. Definitely murder. Were you murdered, Robert? Were you murdered, Robert? Three. Was that three? three. Do you need help, Robert? That was a no, I think. I don't think he wants... Yeah, I don't think he wants help. I think he's happy to stay here. Can we confirm that? Yeah. Robert, are you happy to stay here? Please, just not twice. Are you happy to stay here? That was two from over there, wasn't it? I didn't hear anything that time. I had to admit I didn't hear That was... Any surname with Robert yet? <clears throat> Stott or Scott, something okay, like that. Okay, all right. Richard? Yeah? Let's bring you in. We've got a lot of information from David. We've had those knockings on the floor. What, what, what can you gather the, from that? This area, the whole of the house is, is haunted by a chap called Robert, um, right. who was murdered. Because um, he is all over the place, too. Yeah, you've got the right name and, and surname. Um, did Scott or... Yeah, Scott. Yeah, he's following us. Yeah. He's following us around. Yeah. Let's move on. Should we move to another mm. area? Because we're going to come. I think we should maybe come back to this room. Or, well, if you're saying he's all over the house, we can come back anywhere. This room somehow feels energetically more active. Right. It definitely feels. I can hear a lot more in here. What are you hearing? Um, well, I can hear lots of shuffling. I can hear children playing here. I can hear. I can hear people moving around. Oh, oh, oh! Something just. Uh, uh, is, is someone here? The children are running around. Whoa, yeah. that was weird. Something I th I looked. I looked because I thought you were pressing right. against my arm here. Just just there. Just yeah, pressing that, like that. that. When you get feelings at that height, to me, if it's there or in your hand, it always indicates children to me. Because an adult would touch you here or here, whereas a child would take your hand or hit you that here. That was weird. That was a really weird feeling. Should we move the on? Came from behind, it right? was, I heard it. Yeah. That was weird. That was a really weird feeling. That was weird. That was a really weird feeling. Now aware of Robert Scott's death, we'd soon learn a little more as David tried a touch of psychometry using a piece of rope found lying in one of the castle's many first floor rooms. Richard, can I ask the man who was killed earlier, was the man who killed him hung? Indeed he was, yes. OK. Not that that's the rope, he just drew my attention to it and said... Oh, did he? He just said, not as thick as the rope that hung the bastard. Not so, as thick as the rope that, that hung, hung the, the bastard. bastard. Yeah. He spoke to you. Yeah, it's just in my head, just said, not as thick as the rope that hung the bastard. David's walk around was continually being disturbed by noise. And as we prepared to film his next room, more sounds would soon come our way. Did you hear that? What the? What's that? that? No, I heard what the that. was that? I heard that. What? Did you hear a cry? No, I heard oh. a. <gasps> That's why I heard oh, a slightly quiet, but a breathy sound. Oh! 
Right there, just like here. Just. Ooh. Ooh, someone's on the stairs. Someone was on the stairs. Uh, definitely, there was footsteps on that stair. So the the, 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 the stairs was like footsteps and the creak. creaking on the mm. stairs. Mm. <gasps> that was right underneath. Yeah, was next through there. Oh no, I'm really not liking it because it's all over the place. It is all over the place. Oh, shh. Uh, and I'm shh. sorry. Shh. Where's he coming from? Everywhere. Above us? Oh, it's... Oh, it's up above us. I've never done anything like it in my life. Talk to him, see if we can get it from him. We're here for but I'm gonna shit myself. If you're here, give us a real big bang very close to us. Was that someone's stomach? I heard I heard a wit. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sounded like it came from the back of me. If you're here, give us a real big bang very close to us. If you're here, give us a real big bang very close to us. If you are trying to communicate with us, please knock clearly three times for yes. Four. Oh, I heard that. Might have been the wind. <laughs> that was that was a woman going. Oh. I think it's the wind. The let's, con let's concentrate. Well, let's listen again. I think yeah. I'm pretty sure it was the wind. Still now. banging. He's still let's banging. Listen. Should we talk about it later? I know wind and it's not the wind. Oh, hateful. It's not the wind. I'll go through the iron. It's That's the, the wind. wind. It's not. No. It does coincide with the strongest gusts. But not that time. <laughs> no, they're not strong enough. <laughs> I'm going in there. Okay. If there are children here, if there are children here, please come and play some more with us. It's children, why is it coming from the roof again? There and again. there was no high wind. Whining. It's not coming from the roof, it's coming from right down here. And there was no high wind there, and the wind had dulled. That's where I think it's coming from. Right down here. Can you Below. please tap where we're standing? Come and tap amongst us, round our feet. Please? Please. We briefly left this area with opinions strongly divided on just how much or little of these constant and reactionary bangs could be attributed to the howling winds that were swirling around Port Talbot at this time. I know wind and it's not the wind. Oh, pitiful. It's not the wind. The silent and stunned faces surely say it all. This place was alive with sounds, some subtle, some significant. So, having taken stock of events so far, we briefly had time to see what guest psychic Kevin Wade would make of this remarkable property. This devil, it fascinates me, and this is very much haunted. There's a lot of energy here. I'll tell you that now. All right. It's a gamekeeper, and he was murdered by a poacher. Oh, right, right. And I feel somewhere up here to the left, this is where he stands, this is where he's been seen. It used to be seen here, right. just here. And he haunts this, but he was killed in the garden with a poacher. So the poacher killed him? Yeah. Do you know how he was killed? Crossbows or something. Right. OK. It crossbows or something. Whether he's killed with a crossbow, I don't know, but he was definitely killed by a poacher. Uh -huh. And he's haunted this ever since. Kevin, can we get a date for the poacher at all? 1300s. Something like that. But this used to be an Abbey around about 1100. Right. So the poach is from 1300. Yeah, yeah. Having heard another reference to a murder at Margham, further unpleasantries seem to lie in wait further along the first floor. Well, I just do not feel happy being up, up here. I just do not feel happy. But I feel it's all to do with children up here. Right. All of it, and the atmosphere. Plus, it's haunted, the stairway's haunted, and 
there's so much negative energy. So is there any, can you see any, any children here? Can, or are you just, you're just hearing them? I, I can see them, I can also hear that they're all different stages. Yeah. What are they doing? Are they just running about? They're they? running about, tapping their feet, and they're singing Ring of Ring of Roses. That's how I know it's to do with the, the yeah. Black Death. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, if we come back yeah. here with our night vision cameras, mm. then we'll see what else maybe you could pick up yeah. later on, yeah? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> come on, then. Let's go. We were greeted by Margam Castle's imposing exterior, and things weren't any more comfortable once our cameras were rolling inside. I'd already sampled this place after dark, and another deadly dose of terror was ready and waiting for a few others too. Set amongst parkland in Port Talbot, South Wales, Markham Castle is a relatively young building. But appearances can be deceptive. Its endless empty rooms are anything but innocent, as we were all about to witness. Do with that then. Oh! oh what, 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 what? Holy shit! Something following me. And now it was time to switch into night vision as John Gilbert and I took David, Richard, Ian and paranormal investigator Steve to the place that had scared us stiff the night before. Right in there, and we heard a massive bang, and like as if somebody was in this room while we were over there, which made me scream even more. It was just pathetic, I know, but it was so frightening. Come on, if you're here, show yourself. Make a sound. Nobody. Shit, did you hear that? I tell you, I just heard... Um, I just heard something back from where we came from. Like a, in, in a room, not oh, wind. Back. Yeah. There's another noise in there. It's like footsteps on the floorboards. Come on, where are you? Come on, if there are any children, please come and play with us. Is there anyone here? There is an energy here. That's the best way of describing it. And sometimes it shifts. Sometimes it's, it feels like that male to me, and other times it's just an energy. Where's Steve? He's gone a bit further back, room. hasn't he? Steve! Oh. Yeah? Come on! Have you got a minute? What's happened? Back here? What? Come back here a minute. Where are you, I'm back in this room. Can we just stop and listen? What What's is up? It? Well, I didn't realise there's a floor above our heads and it sounds like somebody walking on it. Just be still. Oh. It's the wind, isn't it? Was that two bangs in a distance somewhere? Please knock two times, twice in... Gee! Now, how about that? Fuck, where did that come from? That was That's the other there, room. No, it sounded like something falling it to me. It was something falling or being chucked, yeah. Okay, thank you. If that was you, can you do it again? Let's move on. Let's walk. Can we go any further? We're going to a little room here. Oh! I just heard a. Ah. Yeah, I heard that. Did you? Mm, I did, definitely heard that. Really, I heard it. Ah. Mm. Hard to distinguish if it's a child or a woman. I yeah. did hear that, definitely. Yeah. All night long, everybody's been saying that they're frightened, that they're nervous, that they, they don't like it, and I've been like Mr... But for the, since we came up this time, I've had a really powerful sense of anticipation. Almost like, 
a palpable electric feeling of something's about to happen. It's like being, you know, the pictures building yeah, and yeah. I feel, I've been feeling like that since we came up onto this floor. Margham Castle may have spent several hours being blasted by high winds, but even we could differentiate between atmospherics and some of the more inexplicable audible sounds on offer, particularly footsteps in otherwise empty rooms. Time then for Carl and John Dibley to see what a vigil with guest medium Kevin Wade could produce. It's almost like there's, there's something waiting to happen. Yeah. Just, well, a, just in, the, in the building. Is anyone here? Please show yourself to us if you can, in any way, shape or form. Other by making a noise, banging sound. There's an evil energy up here, a real e evil energy. Terrorizing kids. Oh! What, 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 what? What, what, what? down I here? Saw, I saw something move in the background. Come on, speak to me or show yourself or do something. I'm here to help you. Do that down here. Yeah. Footsteps. That's walking. Definitely yeah. walking. Walking, yeah. Walk louder, stop louder for us. I feel like there's something behind me. I do feel like I'm constantly being watched, I have to admit. Yeah, you're being watched. Is anyone here? What the f was that? This is good, this is good. <laughs> There's something behind me. <laughs> what is it, Kevin? That's three in a row, Stop that's three it. things in a row. That's what been... is it, Kevin? You asked them to come forward, we asked them to come forward now. <laughs> what the f is that? <laughs> that was loud. That's OK. Oh, come on. Come on, try. And again. There was, something came from round there. Oh, and then it came here. Yeah, oh, yeah. And then it, is it Mr. G? There are so many things that have happened. One of the problems is, is that is that these things are coming and they're they're not actually coming at us. They they they're, they're they're coming around us, but none of them are actually hitting they us. They won't because they can't get anywhere near us. Let's get back. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's get back and let's hope nothing. Change. Let's hope We're nothing. going now. Bye. See you later. We're going back. But we will be back up here. So, following on from our earlier experiences, two separate vigils have now reported similar unease at the close proximity of the phenomena captured amongst Margam's upper floors. And if these sounds were from stones flying around through the castle's otherwise dark and empty rooms, how much danger would David, Carl, Kath, John, Stuart and I all be about to step back into? How do you feel about it? Just kind of apprehensive, really. I feel a bit worried about it. I don't like it. Show us where you are. Give us an indication where you are. Shout out or make a noise. Please talk to us. Robert, if you can hear my voice. Oh! oh all right, come down. Come down, come down. Would you like a... Oh, what? what? Someone just touched me in the back. <laughs> that, was, that was a definite, that's the most definite prod I've ever had. It was like this, Stewie. It was like that. Right, okay. <laughs> oh, shit. Another stone. Are you right? Are you, are you, are you right? I'm all right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I turned, when it happened, I turned around, I expected to see somebody behind me, and I was right up against the wall, but it was a prod, it was fingers right in my back. Who's here, David? Well, Robert's here, for sure. But I am still convinced there's something I can't get attached to at all. Right, come on, let's go further in, because the stone was coming from in there, so we should no, go forward, I think yeah? we should definitely go in. Go well, on, then you go first. I keep thinking someone's touching the side of my head. Sorry, but something's just smacked against that cabinet right. there. Right. Well, Here, right cabinet. in front of you, it's just like someone just tapped the side of it. <gasps> what was that? That was a big was a bang, bang underneath our feet. Yeah, yeah. Something's playing with us big time. I would agree with that. 
What's playing with... Sorry, some, it's, some it's, Oh no, it's Shadow. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Who's... <coughs> ah! Oh, that was me, David. it was me. David, Sorry, David. Sorry, it's just coughing, it's clearing my throat. It's still Sorry. affecting my throat. Calm down. Ah! <laughs> something's just... Something's just been thrown and it's just hit the top of my head. It was a stone, Stuart. Well, it's just hit me on the top of the head. Are you all right? Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? I'm actually, for the first time, I'm, I'm, I'm actually getting... I'm actually, I'm getting worried about it. Let's go on, come on. Let's go on. Yeah. Why don't we carry on to the, to, to further to where we were before? To that, that little well. Right? Yeah. What do you mean, speaker? <gasps> what did you hear that then? Yeah. What? Did you hear talking as well then? Yeah. I heard talking and someone coming at me. Come on, let's get in there. Let's get in there and do it, yeah. Come on, ladies. This way. Right, come on, be brave. Mm, it's like they're you. all gathering. It is. You know? It's banging in here. It I is. can, I can, I can sense it. And I tell you what, I don't like is that up there. So, what was giving me cause for concern? Just who is haunting this property, and how many more frights was Margam Castle prepared to throw our way? Margam Castle may look enticing, but our investigation of this Grade One listed building has been littered with spine-chilling frights. But are these due to playful children, a murdered gamekeeper, or even the poacher who shot him? The phenomena seems to have accelerated as David, Carl, Kath, John Stewart and I continue to poke around in the rain-swept gloom of the dark and dangerous upper floors. This way. All right, come on, be brave. <clears throat> it's like they're all gathering. It is. You know? It's banging in here. It I is. can, I can, I can sense it. And I tell you what, I don't like is that up there. That's where listen, we were. Listen. That was the footstep upstairs. Yeah. Oh. Oh. F God. This f Holy this, shit. This is the fourth time. <gasps> Jesus. It's not. It's, it's the wind hitting the. No. Listen, listen it's, it's like kids running. You can sometimes it is the window, but the in between yeah. it there is. That's the wind. Come on, if there's anyone here, show yourself. Do something to prove your existence. God, it is like you can hear people talking, isn't it? I know Carl. I, I can. Yeah, it's like a conversation. It's the others. If you can hear us and see us, which I know you can, please don't stop. Please talk to us. Make a noise. Make a loud noise so we can hear you, please. What was that? that? Back what? there, back over there. What, what was, was it? it? I don't know, it sounded like a, a girl's cry. Yeah. It did. And then it, was like, then it was like a footstep. I felt the, felt the step, I didn't hear it. Anything, David? Nothing new, but something has followed us, definitely followed us in. Oh. So it's, like, it's like he's pacing around us, just walking around us, looking at us. Is it the thing you said was in Emmett? You know, no, this is, this, is, this is the male, this is this Robert right. Scott. Should we address him directly? Yeah, yeah, I think we should. Robert, Robert Scott, if you're here, please make your presence felt with us. Do something to show us you're here. 
Robert, if you were a gamekeeper, talk to us. Ask, ask him about his murderer. Ask him about how did he feel when he was hanged. Robert, how did you feel when you knew that your murderer would be hanged or was hanged? <laughs> Why was it that was right by me foot? Is that it? Yeah, I felt that land. I did as well. Like, I thought it felt I'm bigger. I'm so sorry yeah. for you like that. That was really shit. Well, that was certainly, um, certainly entertaining, wasn't it? That scared me, that did. It scared them. That was really... Mm. It's over know. here somewhere. It's, it's there. Not. That wasn't there before. I just landed on my feet. If they can throw stones, why can't they... Why can't they pick up a chair and, and throw a chair? That stone's a lot faster than a chair. Yeah. I know, but isn't it just about energy rather than the weight yeah, of... Surely you'd need more energy to move something heavier. So, Amargam's ghostly bumps and bangs mainly down to one source, the gamekeeper who was murdered within these grounds just over a century ago. And when Robert Scott's energy does manifest, does it signal big trouble? In the hope of accumulating further proof of this belief, Carl and Stuart offer to spend one final hour up on the empty and hideous first floor. I just feel too right. I don't feel all right. I don't feel um, very, very scared at this moment in time. Well, Stuart and I have just gone to the... Um, uh, <coughs> uh, we've gone to the nursery. What's happening? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the f*** is that? Right, the torch is off. It's in the pocket. Is there anyone out there in the other rooms? There's movement in the other... Is there anyone in the other rooms? You could just say that you're there because we're hearing noises. Is there anyone in there? Any crew? What the f*** is that? What was that then? I don't like that chair. How many chairs are in here? The two, three. One, two. If there's anyone in here with us now... Three, my name three, four. Stuart. If you are here, can you please show us a sign? If that's you making that dragging sound, could you please do it again for us? We're not here to harm you in any way. What the f*** is that noise? Moving now. Is there anyone in there? It does. What was that then, Carl? Don't mind. Did you hear it? Mm. Come on, stop f***ing around and do something. Oh. Oh, that's another what, chair. Is, there. It, is, that, is that a chair? Is that. Where's it coming from, though? So windy outside. I don't know if it's a chair or something scraping on the floor. Well, we've, we've been hearing things all day long, haven't we? And we've not been sure where it's coming from, either it's coming from above us or below us, because it's so big and echoey, isn't it? We, we can't really pinpoint where, it, where, the, where the noise is coming from, can we? And that's been the big problem with this location, hasn't it? Do you agree? I agree, yeah. The, the job is every, the, there's so much. Oh! Yeah, yeah. What the f was that? That, that, that was in the that corner. That could have been my fault, mate. That was, was it? Yeah, it could have been my fault. Yeah. If you want to be sent on your way, please let us know, and we'll get a meeting. Oh! Whoa. Holy shit! What was that? Oh, the chair in the corner. And we'll get a meeting. Oh! Whoa. Holy shit! And we'll get a meeting. Oh! Whoa. Holy shit! No way. Yes, that's, it was. that's moved. That has definitely moved.
Margam Park and its castle had greeted us with true horror movie style, a grand but equally intimidating building that's encased by lonely parkland, the ideal place, it seemed, to let your imagination run riot. Cue the black veil of nightfall, then a bombardment of gale force winds, and all hell broke loose. Yet, individually, each and every crew member saw, or more likely heard, something that couldn't have been caused by mere atmospherics. Something does hang in its air, the deathly desolation of a murdered man who simply cannot let go of the crime committed against him. Margam Castle is a very, very frightening place. The atmosphere was just right. It was electric. And the amount of things that happened to us just on, on David's walk round was enough, really, for the whole night. It was absolutely amazing. Ooh. Ooh, someone's on the stairs! Someone was on the stairs! Uh, definitely, there was footsteps on that staircase. I think what was particularly challenging for me at Margam Castle were the continued knocks and raps now, the wind was quite high that night, but these seemed to be different. The, they went on in, in random patterns, twos and threes, and at some points they did seem to be responding to us. What they were, I don't know. I don't think it was, can easily be explained by the weather. To sum up with Margam, though, what a fabulous location. Uh, it is a horror movie set. It's glorious, gothic very haunted, very spooky. By day, a delightful place to wander, but be warned. Enter Margam Castle at night, and every step you take feels like it could be your last. Sleep tight. Fielding, and this week I've brought Most Haunted to Somerset and the very haunted Taunton Castle. Taunton may rightly stand proud as Somerset's county town, but how many skeletons hide in the proverbial cupboard of its 800-year-old castle? The buildings here have certainly endured a varied past. A museum first opened in 1778, before the Victorians used this site to house both a private school and public baths. A stark contrast to the monastery that initially occupied this site seven centuries earlier. But behind the aesthetic pleasantries lies the bloody execution of over a hundred local men. Their crime was siding against King James II during the 17th century battles that raged in and around Taunton. Step forward the infamous hanging judge, George Jeffries, a cold and callous killer who may well haunt today's location. So with so much history and paranormal activity, who would be mad enough to spend last night here alone and in the dark? Well, that's exactly what Kieran and myself did. This is what happened. The thing I don't like about this particular area is all the display cases. Mm. Because you, you catch reflections and you catch shadows. Did you hear that then? Did you hear the banging? Yeah. The bang? Yeah. It did sound like it was coming from back in the hall. It's weird. Shh. Did you hear that? What did you hear? I don't know. It's like a... I thought I heard shuffling. We've chosen this particular area because of its history. But... There are other parts of the castle. <gasps> what the f <laughs> was that from down there? Yeah, it was. Did you hear it? I didn't because I was talking. It's shuffling again. It's like this one. Like this. Well, that's what I heard when we were in the other. He's shuffling on the carpet. Castle's museum had offered both Kieran and I a few audible outbursts, but who or what may be haunting this ancient fort? 
Over 400 years ago, the hanging judge George Jeffries conducted the bloody assizes here. His ghost is now seen walking along the empty corridors of the castle, along with the mysterious ghost of the Grey Lady. A fair-haired woman, dressed in what's described as 17th century clothing, has also been seen. And marching footsteps have also been heard in the empty rooms and along the corridors in the dead of night. Its main claim to fame has to be the Monmouth Revolution of 1685, when the illegitimate son of King Charles II raised an army of, of peasants in Somerset and Dorset. They were going to take the throne from the Catholic King James II, but unfortunately it ended in bloody defeat at the Battle of Sedgemoor. And about 500 peasant soldiers were brought here. The assize courts were held here in the castle and the assizes were presided over the Lord Chief Justice of England no less than George Jeffreys, the hanging judge. 500 people imprisoned in that building in there. 500 people tried and many of them sentenced to be hanged, drawn and quartered for high treason. They say that on the crossroads of Somerset there was hardly a tree that wasn't drenched in blood that didn't have hanging bodies or body parts hanging from it. This is the Somerset Room. Many of the museum workers refuse to come in here on their own as they feel they're being watched by a sinister force. There are dramatic temperature changes for no apparent reason and a poltergeist likes to make itself known by moving objects around on a regular basis. One particular instance that I recall a few years ago is when I was actually doing some painting in the Somerset room on top of a pair of steps. And for some reason or other, the whole room went cold, extremely cold. And it, the hairs went up on the back of my neck. And I had to stop work, come down the stairs just to re regain my composure. Um, looked around, there was nothing obvious there. But clearly, there was something that sort of caused that room temperature to drop very suddenly. And I'm not a nervous person. I, in fact, I don't even believe in ghosts, but certainly there are times when I've felt rather, felt as though I haven't been on my own in the building. One of the custodians actually cleaning the glass, one of the glass cases, um, thought someone had physically grabbed him by the neck but could see no reflection in the glass, turned round to see he was there, there was no one there. But on reflection, he actually thought that it felt more like a rope tightening around his neck. And of course, he was in the room where the bloody assizes were held. Castle House is said to be the most paranormally active place here. The ghost of a cavalier has been seen on the stairs and the ghost of a young woman who was made to watch her brother's execution outside is said to roam throughout the building. Some of the staff refuse to come into the bedroom area as they claim it has an oppressive feeling and is always cold. Something else that's reported here is that objects disappear only to reappear elsewhere. Taunton Castle is a place of siege, execution, death, pain, anguish and torment. If any place should be haunted, then this place behind me should. Taunton may have once taken centre stage in mapping out England's history, but will our investigation of this unusual looking castle prove just as interesting? And having been here with Kieran O'Keefe the night before, what does the parapsychologist expect our other crew members to experience? There's going to be an awful lot of emotional um, memories here. Um, a lot of people would have suffered. Do you think the mediums are going to pick up on that straight away? 
definitely, their mediums may actually be just more empathic than you or I. You know throughout the, uh, the, the other episodes that I am very skeptical about what mediums can do. But at the end of the day, there may be emotion in the fabric of the building and they may just be picking up on that. The other problem is because there's a lot of visual clues around the location, a lot of visual clues that do point to very negative emotion. We have to be aware that the mediums may consciously or subconsciously pick up on that. The great thing about working with David though is that he always preempts anything I'm going to say along those lines and always says, now I'm aware there are visual clues but I'm going to try and block those out and go beyond that. It seems that the staff here are very aware and also quite frightened of some of the locations. And when I hear that, that makes me a little bit apprehensive. Yeah, and also it's that sort of story that will make other staff that come to work here, it'll make visitors, uh, it'll make various members of the team, like you say, suggestible. Um, it'll give them the same sort of experience because, like you said already, you are a little apprehensive. But given that it's a professional team, given that we've been in situations like this before, I would hope that we don't let suggestion get the better of us. So we must completely clear our minds of any hint of the worries that battle-weary castles can sometimes present. But history has proven this to be a town that played its part in both trial and retribution. But are those sinners still here? Or is one particular malevolent male entity responsible for the foul deeds that haunt Taunton Castle. There's almost like there is blood on his, literally blood on his hands. I was being shown by the two children writing on the wall. Well, the boy's dead. It was the writing and it was being scribbled out. It's the writing, it was being scribbled out. But something's happened here that has been um, covered up. He's one of the most aggressive personalities I've ever met living or crossed. Somerset's county town is Taunton, and that town's castle is our base for the day. But this place also holds a bloody past. It was once a witness to one of England's most infamous deeds, the sentencing and slaughter of many mortals. But how many of these still haunt Taunton Castle to this very day? To reflect the rich tapestry of a location that stretches back almost 900 years, a museum can be found here too. The perfect place then for medium David Wells and guest psychic Ian Shillito to unpeel the many layers of this historical and integral castle. It's really hard for me because my head is spinning. I feel really, the pit of my stomach, I feel really nauseous. And my ears are, my ears are ringing with it. It's kind of, um, I, d I hate to use the word slaughter. I hate to use the word slaughter, but that's what it, it's, and the smells and the taste, it's kind of, it's like a butcher shop. In this you, you particular know. room? No, not in this room, not in this room. I, I want to go into the grounds and around the town. It's almost like the whole town is involved in it, you know? Um, the back of my neck is absolutely on fire and there's something or someone I'm trying to ignore who won't be ignored and, and I want to say it's there's like a platform here and I, I, I'm having to look up at him he's not on the staircase it's like a it's like a, a platform I don't want to stand I want I want to actually do this I want to stand here and look up at him like and like that like that That's, so you're shackled yeah I want to and my feet are probably shackled as well and I want to look up I'm shackled and there's a really horrible bastard, for want of another word, who is is sitting in judgment. He's got, um, you know, the the Prince Charles style wig on. Mm -hmm. You know that kind of that kind of wig, and it's dark. It's not like a modern judge's wig. Um, there's almost like there is blood on his, literally blood on his hands. So they show me his hands, and the the blood is dripping Sorry. off his You're hands. Right. Yeah, I'm just getting very strange readings. What, from David? Well, it was when David knelt down. And, and what I'm getting is fluctuation from about 1.3 on the y-axis, but then it's going up to 6, 7, and then back down to 1.3, and then up again, down again. How unusual just, is that? that is quite it's quite unusual. unusual. Yeah. It's almost, as, it's almost as quick as the judgment is made by the simple look of the person, they're not given an opportunity to, to defend themselves at all. So, all right, for this is the first time you've brought it out, the judgment 
you know, so we're talking about this man up here yeah. with the long wig is obviously a judge. He's a judge, yeah, absolutely. And these people are being brought to him yeah. and he's got blood on his hands, so yeah. therefore he's the one that's making the decision. Yeah, and there's, there's like columns of soldiers. It's, it's, it looks kind of civil war time to me. Is there a name with this 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 one man? And is it yeah? Sorry. Is he here all the time? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of sense that he's around the town rather than always here. He might even reside here as a stomper. You know, he's one of these that he stomps around. He's one of the most aggressive personalities I've ever met, living or crossed. Any name with him? Um, Jeffries. Mm -hmm. Jeffries. And how did he die? Can you pick up how he died or when he died? Do you know, it's, it's such a cliche, but you have to go with it. I feel like he died in the Tower of London, um, but not by being beheaded. Um, and I would think it would be the late 16, very late 1600s, almost a bit like 1690, that sort of era, maybe into the very early 1700s. Okay. The hanging Judge George Jeffreys did indeed use Taunton's castle as the 17th century courtroom in which he passed sentence during the infamous Bloody Assizes, and more sensory perceptions waited upstairs. Is there anything else that you can describe, you can give me any, any, anything particular about his dress? Well, you want to say like the old black hat thing, but you know, it's, you know, because he's, he's, he's sentencing some people yeah, to death. Yeah, even more specific, can you describe it? The, the, what my guide is saying is it was permanently on. He what said does it, it look like? Well, it's kind of like a, it's, I don't know if it's like a mortarboard, it's kind of like a, it's not a hanky, you know how you see them and they put a black hanky? It's, not, it's, it's a hat. Thank you. That's yeah, it's amazing. a hat. Yeah, okay. Thank you are for you that. Gonna, are you going to enlighten? Yes, <laughs> I am. Yeah. After that basically, struggle. Basically, most people, two things, when they, when they imagine if they're faking anything or anything like that, they see a judge, he has, he has a white wig, and David said he didn't, he had a dark wig, mm -hmm. which he did. These came in years later, but the big one is that everyone expects that when they put the black cap on their head, it is only a piece of cloth in the shape of a... A, black a square, diamond, yeah. Black diamond, mm -hmm. which you put on. But originally, in these times, they actually placed their tricorn hat that's on their head yeah, to pass the sentence of death. Right. Thanks. Why? Don't you like it, Neil? No, I don't like it. I feel really headachy in here. I need to sit down, actually, can I just perch on this? I've got um, one woman. <clears throat> and I've got one young man, but they're modern-ish. They're much more up-to-date than what we've come across so far. It's, almost, it's, it's, it's abuse of some sort. Um, now, I don't know whether it's because he's not quite right himself which is, is no excuse for it, and that's not what I'm suggesting. Or whether he was extraordinarily rebellious, or whether, he's, whether his parents were... Just a little bit odd. But, um... How, think, how long are you talking about? I'm talking last century. So what happened in this room then? Why, why is this room so specific to what, what you know, you've picked up on? Well, the boy's dead. Mm -hmm. The young boy is dead. How old, young? Late teens, early twenties. Mm -hmm. um, Name with him? I think it's Lionel, okay. which is a bit... Okay. What's the father? Unusual. Is there, you, unusual sorry, you mentioned a mother and a father and that sort of... Mm -hmm. What's father? Father seems to have his nose in books. And they're kind of, um, you know those wonderful old books with um, Egyptian, you know how they have those sketches of excavations? Mm -hmm. that, that You know what I'm saying? Um, books like that, so I think he was involved, you know, I guess. Can you hear this knocking? Was, I'm hearing them all the time, while you're talking, I keep hearing uh, yeah. that thing, but there seems to be two, two, diff two distinct tones. There seems yeah. to be a, a, a distinct sort of thubbly seems distant, and there's something that's more of a bang that seems to be closer. We can hear you. Whoever you are, we can hear you. But it does seem that there was, there's a mystery surrounding exactly how he did die. Are you able to tune in in any way to establish his mental state 
I know he's going to be really yeah. traumatised, but I mean, I'm trying to tap into... That, I mean, that's exactly what I am trying to do, and what I can't get to is just, you know... I'm right. finding it really difficult to breathe in here. It's almost like... Do you know what? And I've had a taste in, the, in my mouth as well, but it's almost like I, I'm finding it quite difficult to breathe. I'm not just saying that for a fact, I'm not, I, honestly, yeah. I'm not, I'm just... Because just as you're saying that, I was just about to say, I feel like suffocation. With David picking up on two tragic losses of life that spanned several centuries, we decide the time was right for guest medium Ian Shilato to also unearth a few facets of this property's past, starting with another visit to the museum that has long stood here. Well, I think, first of all, we just remove everything from here, because mm -hmm. obviously this is very, very, very recent. Filtering through all that, two energies stick out down yeah. here so far. One of them is a soldier. Uh -huh. uh, you can ask me what year it is, I'm not sure. Um, but he's got a very long sword, very long stick, oh. like a sword uh -huh. type of thing. He's got, um, I mean, we must be going back 300 years or something, but there's almost like a tunic style. It's either blue and yellow or blue and red. There's, there's a specific royalist colour yeah. associated with it. Um, he has been seen around lots of places here. I certainly saw him earlier on today. He's also around, he's checking us out. Um, I'll get back to him a bit later on, hopefully. The other one that's in this building is a lot later, a lot later in time. So I'm, again, saying probably round about um, pre-Victorian, um, a man, older man, very grumpy, cantankerous old mm. man, grey beard, quite square, a bit like um, Captain Nemo or whatever his name was. Oh, Do you know right. who I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Captain... Jules Verne character. Yeah, yeah, like that. Um, but not happy. I mean, he came up to me, he just went straight into your face oh, like right. that. Yeah, so yeah. I think he's going to be trouble later on. Oh, right. I don't think he likes what's been done to this particular area. Okay. Um, I saw him with plans on a table mm -hmm. and saying, it's not like this, it's not been done like this. I want it done like this. So is there any initial or name with him? I don't know if it's associated with him, but all I'm getting is James. Uh -huh. um, but also James the First. It would be interesting, like I say, to come here at night time on your own, because I believe there is a more of a shadowy figure associated with here, a more of an, again, male, not, yeah. not feminine, but, but much more, um, I'm seeing him in like, almost in sackcloths, almost quite miserable. Now, I don't, I have a funny feeling, you know, it's not associated with, with, the, with the rooms, but it's just, I think it's a lot, I think it's actually associated with the ground that was here before. When was, you say sackcloth, you're talking a long yeah, time Yeah, no, ago. I know, I, this is what I'm trying yeah, to get yeah. to. I'm, I'm, I am want to say Middle Ages, I want to say really, really, I've no idea how old this castle <laughs> is, but I mean, even if it wasn't here prior to that, I think that there is a real hunched over, poor, sorrowful soul on his, the, who, who's on his own that just sh rumbles around this, 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 this area. And would people see him? Is I think shadows. I think it's right. more going to be more shadows. It's just, it's, it's, just a dark, it's just a dark vibration that you pick up on. Now, one thing I've heard here from Claire Audenly is a couple of kids all right. Or children. I had a very interesting dream last night where I was shown a room very similar to this and I was being taken to a wall, the side of a wall, and I was being shown by the two children writing on the wall. Oh, gosh. I don't know what that means to me. Yeah. I mean, it was scratched. It was, it was like a pen. It wasn't a pencil or, or a biro, but it was scratched onto the wall. Um, and it was kept getting rubbed out. And it was almost, I don't know what, I, I can't link in to, to them here at this precise moment. Okay. But I do have to trust what I'm given. What you're given. And every time that happens, it tends to be sort of right. Now, I have noticed something I didn't say earlier on. I didn't notice that there's a lot of 
energy, and it sounds so corny, but there's a lot of energy moving around this castle. Mm -hmm. And the energy is associated with one or two men. So there's a lot of, you know, oh, almost right. patrolling in a way, I suppose. And any of the men that you mentioned, any of the men that you, you mentioned, you said a soldier at the beginning. The, yeah, yeah. Well. I, whether that's the same time period, I don't know, because I'm only seeing it as an energy. I'm seeing it like a cloud. Right. Um, and I've been very much aware of it in my walk around with us this, with, with, with today and also when I arrived. Right. Um, and you walk in and out of it, and it's not stationary, so it's not like a ley line, and it's not like yeah. something's happened on this spot. But there's something separate that's moving around. Yeah, it's, male, it's an independent... Male it, energy. But it's a group of males. Oh, right. It's not one person. It's a group of males. Oh, right. So they are literally... They're not here, but it's more to do with downstairs and the grounds. Right. Moving around. Do you get, like, a time period? of when these people, these men, would have come from? No, I can't get away from the Civil War now. We've now heard two separate spiritual links to the 17th century battles that rage near here. But do such energies still have an adverse effect on modern day life in this part of Somerset? As we prepare for nightfall, would any further punishment be thrown down upon the most haunted team? Taunton is a place that is said to have once forced Queen Victoria to draw the curtains in her train carriage as she passed through a town associated with a turbulent past. Heavy political overtones are once felt here, particularly when hanging Judge George Jeffreys passed the death sentence on many a man. And now it was our turn to see if this man's wrath still lingers three centuries on. Oh one other more secretive occurrence has surrounded this place for nearly a century since Lionel, the son of a tenant at the castle, died here in mysterious circumstances. So with both Ian settled in the castle's library, David, John Dibley and I could return to the museum to see if the loathsome George Jeffreys was prepared to talk. No, really? Well, they held before they were taken into the court. Is it worth asking now? Or? Yeah, I think so. I heard that. I heard that. Was, was that like a woman's? Yeah. Is it worth asking now? Or? Yeah, I think so. I heard that. I heard that. Was, was that like a woman's? Yeah. I feel really apprehensive. Do you? Yeah. Oh, I heard that. What's that? Something moved behind you. I feel really nervous here. Just in that spot. I, I yeah, feel yeah, I do. Dragged through here. And... Something's horrible there. What? Just where you're standing? Yeah, I just. I feel, I'm, if you weren't standing there, I'd, I'd run out. Honestly, just here, just just round this area. I don't know what it is. If there's a spirit in this room, please come forward. That light's just gone out. The torch has just gone out. The torch has just died. Is it taking the energy? Yes. That was on a minute ago. Dead. You're getting the odd flash off it, but nothing major. Yeah. Fantastic. You just changed the battery in that before as well. Yeah, the battery's just been changed. Is there anybody here? Were you held here? Were you sentenced to death here? Just round this corner here, that came round. You know, like a black shadow. Yeah. It just went like that round the side of the. Yeah, that's the sort of thing I've seen doing the walk round. Now I feel as if something big is going to happen. Now whether it's anxiety, and I've just seen a gravestone. Is there any graves round here? Go on. 
Someone's been buried around here. Because allegedly there is an Anglo-Saxon graveyard, but it's you nowhere know, the uh, van's parked at the minute. Mm. That's it. It's parked right on it. Oh, okay. Are you to do with the graveyard? Please move the table. Anything? Oh. Oh. Alright. No, I was just filming you then, and then I just felt something just like, it just whispered down my ear, and that's what made me just start and jump. Oh. Oh. Alright. Are you the man? In the sackcloth? You are. Ah, oh, hello. You are. There is an energy behind me. It's also going down my right arm. Please stand behind the man with the light. So he can feel what I'm I sorry, feel. Sorry, I just felt as if something just played with my head then. Yeah? As if something just fell. It's all I can do, mate. I honestly just felt as if something just touched me there. Okay. Looked off my head. With both Ian's reporting an abundance of sounds from within the library, we decide to hold a second vigil in this same building with David, Kieran, Kath, both Johns, and myself. But before we begin, Carl, Stuart, and Richard were preparing to table tip way up in the attic. If you're here, please try to show yourself to us. Okay, for the first time, I'm actually got cold. I'm feeling cool. Mm -hmm. It's cold. It's definitely yeah. colder up here. Yeah, it was warm out there. So I'm just moving. Are we doing this one of us? Is that one of us? It certainly isn't me. I'm not moving. Try to move this table. You've got energy, you're, you're with us. Um, I don't know who you are, but we need to. No way, no, no way. No, 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 never, ever, never has that ever happened. My head's on the top, my head's on the top. Let's do it right there. Please, Spirit, Spirit, whoever you are, God, thank you so much, you're bloody marvellous. We've never, in all the time that we've been doing this, there's a spirit with us, there's a very strong spirit with us in this room now. I ask you again to do what you've just done. Levitate this table off the floor with all no four way. legs off the floor. I don't believe it. Thank you. No, my, just Richard, please. My legs, are, my legs are back here. Yeah. <laughs> please use our energy. We're with you. Take the table up in the air. All four legs, please. We're working with you. All four legs, and I want it to go. I want it to come higher. I want it to come above our knees. We want to be able to stand up. Please, come on. Please, oh, keep no. going. Come on. Come on, Spirit, whoever you are. Uh, there's only two of us. There's me and Carl now doing this. Please, please, Spirit, lift the table. Lift the table. That's it. Stuart's put his, 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 his hands back on it. My head is thumping like you wouldn't believe it. I want to see this table lift. I then want to talk to you. Please take it off with all four legs. Levitate this table off the floor. Take it up. Take it no way, up. No. Take it up. Oh, I've done it. Do you realise we've done it? Yeah. Do you no realise we've, we've done it? I don't believe we've done it. Lionel, can you hear me? Can you hear us? Can you make a loud noise for us, please? I think Lionel's upstairs then, isn't he? Yeah, that table's going. We've got a old area growing. Where? Ooh. In the corner. Ooh. You see, I've been Walk feeling back. cold all this time here. Like, really freezing. That's why I've got my coat on. Where? Where, Kieran? In the corner, direct. Where, where my, the green? Where my hair is pointing. Oh, in that corner of the room. Yeah. yeah. Dave's walking now. There you go, where David's standing now. Well, is he anything 
I feel a bit giddy, but I think it's just because I stood up. A bit sharpish. Come on, Lionel, if you can produce your shape, your, even your height on me, even if it put a shadow of your head here or something. Oh. Okay, I don't know. Don't know. Is See it, there. Yeah, it can. It's like it's come through into your top of your, bottom of your navel. Yeah, that's where he's here. A bit lower than that. Well, he was there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's gone just no. I just need to sit back for a minute here and just... Do you know what I, 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 I've got tears in my what eyes again. What the hell um, has gone on here? I don't believe it. I want to run around the room. Right, Kim, just, just get just, off. Cal, just Thanks. so you know, my legs. Oh, no! Hey, listen, uh, listen, you, you know I'm doing that, don't you? You can see now. Let's try and emulate it now. Yeah. On right. camera, right? Oh, Stu, yeah. get your knees under the table. Yeah. I'm going to get my knees under the table. Yeah. After three. One, two, three. I'm lifting it now with both knees. Yeah. And, well, and there's, a, there's a difference. There's a total difference. The, there, was a, there was a sense. Yeah, that's quite oh, impressive. Hang on. Look what's happened. What? I'm on tiptoes. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You've got to. Well. You've got to. That, you can't yeah, possibly. That you up. can't possibly have your feet flat on the floor. No, you can't. Let it come up through me, Lionel. Fuck, what a weird. I've never seen it like that before. No. That is very strange. Bizarre. He is, it, it's starting to push down again. Come away then now, David. Oh. That, that, that was weird, that. It was worth us staying there, wasn't it, yeah, for that. That, that? that whole thing is, is great. We were already aware that this location holds plenty of spirits, but these two separate bouts of apparent phenomena have only added to its reputation. And one floor below in the room where he'd prematurely died had Lionel's aura manifested in the huge ball of cold air that Kieran's thermal image camera had clearly captured. And not since these same three investigators instigated a similar reaction at Bottle Within Castle in 2004 have we seen such a massive movement of a table. Godspeed. Please go. And we say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Surrounded by the implements of war, as well as memories of death and execution, our final few hours in Somerset promise more frights in store. Built in 1138, Taunton Castle has witnessed many events, all of which appear to give credence to its latter-day claims of paranormal activity. By far the most active area so far tonight appears to be the main castle house, the very same building that David, Carl, Kath Stewart, John Gilbert and I were about to tentatively step back into. If you need our help, can you cry? Can you make a moan? <gasps> Really hot in here. I, see, I, was, yeah, I was just about to comment, you are sweating like crazy in here. And it's not that hot. I feel like the room's gone really small, but really claustrophobic. Are you alright, John? Yeah. Yeah, you don't look too good. I think I said Lionel, if that was you, please can you make another moan or a whine? <gasps> yes! Old alcohol smell. That's interesting, isn't yeah. it? Did you like to drink? Did you like a drink, Lionel? Oh, is that oh stuff God. coming outside, is it? Did you like a drink, Lionel? Oh, Lionel, do something else. My right arm's going numb. Is it? Well, it's locked in that corridor. It's for a couple of minutes. Do you want to go up to the attic? Does anybody else feel like they're going to keel over? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. What's that? It's like a fairground ride, isn't it? Yeah, like... it is. It's like 
woo, woo, woo. Everything's really... You constantly feel like you're in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are there any spirit people here with us now? In this attic? What was that? What was that? What in this attic? What was that? What was that? It's level here. Yeah. Do you feel a bit better now? I still feel sick. Yeah, I feel sick. Oh! Oh! oh. Someone on the camera. John. Camera. Oh, Which one? I can't see. Don't John. Kill. John. Oh. John. 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 Johnny. Johnny. Come on. John. Come on, Cal. Come on. Up. John. Up you come. John, you're all right. You're all right. John, talk to me. You know what's going on? It's all right. Come on, come on. You're all right, Cal. Oh. John, you're right. You're right. Do you want some water? Do you want me to go get you some water, guys? I think you may be better off getting them out. John, sit down. John, wait. Sit. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. You just bang it dead in the side of the bloody steps. You're right. You're right. Dead weight. It's all over the stairs. Come here. Come on. Let's get you down. Oh. Oh. Get John now. I think we need to get John out. I need to see my hair as well. I, I don't. I don't feel like Carl does. I can tell. I, mean, I, I just keep going. Can we go down. In Do you want to get out? Yeah. Yeah. Let's get down. With Carl literally out for the count and John clearly regretting his decision to persevere, despite his now obvious physical discomfort, we decide to call it quits for the night, quite simply before anyone else fell foul of this area's insufferable aura. Although there was still one other piece of phenomena to be heard that we captured as we were leaving the building. What's that chair at the top? Did you put that there? No. It's me there? and Carl it before. Did you put that there? No. Me and Carbon it before. With the exception of our mediums, we'd arrived in Somerset well aware of the main story surrounding this town and its castle. The bloody Assizes may well have left their stamp on this location's history, but had a far more recent death, one that still remains shrouded in mystery, triggered these remarkable series of events. This table off the floor. So is Taunton's castle haunted? The investigation of Taunton Castle revealed a number of different phenomena. Carl and John in the attic had very unusual physiological reaction to the area. Is anyone else really hot in here? I, see, I, was, I was just about to comment, you are sweating like crazy in here. And it's not that hot. I feel like the room's gone really small, but really claustrophobic. They reported feeling very tired and unwell and then fainted simultaneously. Oh, oh. Right. Oh. Oh. There's a perfectly natural explanation for their feeling of tiredness and certainly illness. Given that it's a very tight staircase that leads up to the attic, that the floors are very disorientating, and that the temperature was relatively higher on that particular investigation, I'm not surprised that they felt unwell or tired. It could be a perfectly natural reaction to the effort that they put into to actually get into that room. In the attic also, Carl, Stuart and Richard actually conducted a table tipping exercise. Now true to form, this particular team actually ensured that there are a number of controls in place. There were cameras pointed below the table and also locked off on the upper torsos. At some point, you can actually see the four legs of the table rise. Levitate this table off the floor with all no four way. legs off the floor. On first viewing, this is very impressive evidence. However, we still have to be a little bit tentative about interpreting it as paranormal. 
The lock-off on the upper torso is some distance back, and given the low-level lighting and that it's in night vision, it is very difficult to ensure with absolute 100% certainty that we're dealing with phenomena and not with some sort of unconscious or subconscious movement of their arms or other part of their bodies. No way, no way. No way. No way. All in all, Taunton Castle revealed some fascinating phenomena that was allegedly paranormal. I'm still sceptical about a lot of it, but I think it's a fantastic location for the excitement and for the genuine reactions that the crew had for their time there. So is this a site still stained by the consequences of a bloody battle? Or is it merely a grounded base for the pain and suffering endured by one gentle soul? Sleep tight.